Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Alex Curry here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys, and happy Friday. Hey, How are we doing? We need to get to team up on you again. You going down. <laughs> Unintentional this time. Down, Skip Bayless. <laughs> I would like to warn our viewers <laughs> that my man across the table, Mr. Shannon Sharp, Pro Football Hall of Famer, is once again about to break the golden rule on this show. You do not ever bet against one man in sports. Tom Brady, and he's about to try it one more time. I'm going to bet against Thomas, Edward, Patrick, Brady. <laughs> All of them? All, All of them. So it's like a five case. Twice in back-to-back weeks. That's correct. Here we go. I can't wait. (laughs) Yeah, let's start with it because Fox has a great matchup in America's Game of the Week this Sunday in a clash of two undefeated teams. Tom Brady and the Bucks head west in their first road game of the season to take on Matthew Stafford and the Rams. Now, the California native Brady will play his first NFL game ever in Los Angeles, facing off against the QB who Rams fans are hoping is the missing piece to getting back to the Super Bowl. Now, Shannon, you've been on the Rams all week on a scale of 1 to 10. How much do you believe in Matthew Stafford to beat Tom Brady? Four, five, nine. That's where I'm at. A nine. Yeah. Say it with your chest. Nine. Try to convince yourself, Shannon Sharp. Yep. I love what the Rams are with Matthew Stafford because you have to defend every blade of grass from zero yard to 60 yards, left, right. There is no, there's no area on the field that's safe when the ball is in his hands. He can just do things. His arm talent is undeniable. He could just do things that Jared Goff can't do. I agree. Keep going. And so you combine that with Cooper Cup. You combine that with Robert Woods. Now, they haven't got D-Jack, Deshaun Jackson involved as much as I think they can and should, but this will be a great game for him to take the top off the coverage at least once. I now, agree. The running game, Skip, they got a couple of guys, a little nick, they nicked at the running game, but... That, I don't know if you're going to have a whole lot of success running the football against this Tampa defense anyway. But teams have had success throwing the football. Matthew, uh, uh, Matt Ryan threw the ball exceptionally well, except the last two throws of that ball game, which were pick sixes. And uh, Dak, we know what Dak did on opening Thursday night. He threw the ball for over 400 yards. So for whatever reason, Skip, while the Bucks' offense have seemingly picked up where they left off, the Bucks' defense haven't had such luxury of doing that yet. So whatever the reasons are, now they're going to possibly be without, we know they're going to be without uh, Murphy Bunning. Then we know possibly without JPP. That's a big, and Skip, they hadn't been getting to the quarterbacks like we saw them that last, what, last five to six games of the regular season and in that playoff push. But, so with that being said, and Sean McVay, this is what Sean McVay wanted. He wanted a quarterback that could run his complete playbook. He did. That could uh, uh, make you defend every area on the field. Mm -hmm. And I think because the Rams' defense, look, that guy, he goes by AD. Aaron Donald is the best defensive player. I can make a compelling case. He's the best player in football. So you think that AD's even better than the Lakers' AD? Yeah, that that AD, yeah. yeah. Aaron Aaron, Aaron Donald has an opportunity. That's a big concession on your no, part, No, no big right? concession. Aaron Donald has a chance to go down as the greatest <laughs> defensive player ever. So I think AD, the AD Anthony Davis has his work cut out to try to get a uh, mm. jump over that hurdle. Mm. Uh, Leonard Floyd, they got the best DB in, in, in football in J-Ram. Uh, Taylor Rapp, Joseph Day. I like, I like the Rams defense. I like the Rams defense. I love this team. So I'm at a nine, and I got the Rams. You got the Rams, sure says do. Shannon Sharp. Do. Okay, my turn. Shannon Sharp at this moment has me on the run because of the loss of two initial players, (laughs) A.B. and J.P.P. If you had told me three, four days ago that I would be without Antonio Brown and Jason Pierre-Paul, A.B. and J.P.P., my initial prediction would have been undercut. I wouldn't have been nearly as confident. But I, for one on this show, have courage of my convictions. I am never flip skip, so I'm oh, yeah. going to stand strong behind my man, Thomas Edward Patrick Brady yeah, Jr. Exactly. 
because I got one thing and only one thing going for me on Sunday. What's that? I do not have Brady's favorite target. And I'm going to remind you, speaking of targets, when they did lose to the Rams last November at Tampa Bay right. on Monday Night Football, the most targets by far on the team in that game right. went to Antonio Brown. He had 13 targets right. in that game. He is almost certainly not going to be able to play because of COVID, right? right? Yep. And what came alive at the end of the year? What made the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl, according to Shannon Sharp. Well, it was the demise of the protection, the offensive line of one Patrick Mahomes boy. Yep. And meanwhile, all of a sudden, Shaq Barrett on one end and even more so, JPP on the other end, started to rise and shine mm -hmm. and, and devastate, right? Yep. JPP made the Pro Bowl last year and it sounds almost certainly like he's not going to play right. in this game, right? Yep. Okay, so you have me at two supreme disadvantages. Mm -hmm. except I got you in one spot. I still don't believe in Matthew Stafford. You will be. I, you will have to say. I admire him. I respect him. I honor him just the way Bruce Arians did. Remember the recent quotes from Bruce Arians? Mm -hmm. I'm going to read them real quick because they are staggering mm -hmm. to me. Of Matt Stafford, Bruce Arians, the coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, mm -hmm. said he's one of my all-time favorite guys. He's tough as nails. He's the one of the few quarterbacks I like going out and watching warm up just to watch him throw because he's so special, said Bruce Arians, who continued. I always felt like he was extremely one of the top four or five quarterbacks in this league for a long time. His team loves him because they know he's going to suck it up for them. OK, mm -hmm. can, can you get much higher praise? No from a coach, and this is way before this game, so it's not a game week. Right. I'm gonna gush ju just to try to set right. them up for the kill. Well, he right? said that even before they were, go they were playing them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He didn't even know right. when he said these right. things, he didn't even know. Right. So I, I want that on the record yeah. about Matt Stafford. Okay. But now we look harder at who is Matt Stafford and what happened in right. Detroit. His record as a starter in Detroit 74, 90, and one, okay? Mm -hmm. In seven of those nine seasons in Detroit, he had this guy nicknamed Megatron. Yeah. Was he any good? Yeah. Uh, you know, some people make the case just in a vacuum. If, if you had to create the all-time greatest receiver, would he not qualify? Oh, yeah. Okay, Calvin Johnson we're talking about. So seven of the nine years with Megatron, Matt Stafford made one Pro Bowl. He went 0-3 in the postseason, and... Two of the games were not even close. The one at New Orleans, I don't know if you remember that one. That was when Drew Brees was riding high back right. in 2011. Right. That was when Brees at his apex. They, they got shelled. It was 45 to 28. But Megatron in that game at Superdome mm -hmm. caught 12 balls for 211 yards and two touchdowns. Mm -hmm. And they still got blown out. Right. Then they played pretty well at Dallas against just a pretty good Dallas team. And well, Tony when they Romo, got robbed, they, they got, got robbed okay. because a, a, a pass interference <laughs> on Hitchens, now a chief, obviously, got overturned. And I still don't know why they it got overturned, but they picked up the flag <laughs> and it saved the day for my Cowboys who then went on to Green Bay and they got robbed at Green no, Bay. You didn't, no, no, no. So maybe it was karma. One what goes around, came back around yeah. and we got robbed because Dez caught yeah. it. We all know he yeah. caught it. I don't even want to start or get ill here well, on the Skip, show. Well, Skip, if you if you if you mug a man down the street and then somebody mug you, how you go call the cops? Because you did the exact okay. same thing, well, so you shouldn't be that, upset. That's what happened. That's <laughs> you just nailed it. 2016 was his final playoff appearance. Matt Stafford in Detroit. He lost 26 to six at Seattle, and he wasn't very good. He barely right. threw for 200 yards, no touchdowns, mm -hmm. no interceptions. That's his resume in Detroit. For all of his arm talent, for all of his toughness. Right. I didn't see the intangibles that lifted him up above and into even the top 10 of quarterbacks, because I don't think you ever had him even in your top 10, though Aaron's is saying he's got top five talent. You, you will see skill to think, I think you and I, we graded him the same way we looked like. We looked at, okay, yeah, throw the ball, got Megatron. But what, shouldn't we get some more victories yeah. out of this? Shouldn't we get a, a guy that's making the playoffs more often? But coaches... They view him entirely skilled, and that's always been the case. If you look at how he's rated okay, and I how coaches it. look at him. I, I got it. And for my eye test, obviously I'm locked into my Dallas Cowboys, and I'll remind Cowboy Nation of a couple of games that Matt Stafford played in his hometown of Dallas, Texas, oh. where he went to Highland Park High School. Right. 
2011 at Dallas, they, they trailed 27 to three in the third quarter, at which point my man Tony Romo suddenly threw two pick sixes in the third quarter. One to the best man in his wedding, Bobby Carpenter, made me wonder, did you throw him a present or something? Because <laughs> it was 27 to three. Right. And all of a sudden I look up, I, I actually went to the restroom at that point right. and came back in and it was 27 to 10. I said, what did I miss? Bobby Carpenter wants a Cowboy first round pick, right. rejected by Bill Parcells. And then on to Detroit, he bounced around. Obviously right. I love Bobby Carpenter, but but again, we had Bobby on the show back at ESPN right. the next day. And he was saying, yeah, I kind of wondered if Tony threw me a present <laughs> because it was so blatant. Right. But again, they came back in the game and here came Matt Stafford and all of a sudden, they pulled it out. They they came all the way back to win 34 to 30. Right. Okay, so he was tremendous that day. Yes. He was even better in 2013 in Detroit when he threw Calvin Johnson. <laughs> he almost broke the record. 329 yards worth of footballs. Yeah. 329? Can Shannon Sharp even fathom no. catching 329 in a game? That's too good. That's that's two games for any receiver. Any, any receiver, it's two games, and Flipper Anderson still has the record at 336, which I still find staggering. But no, I think that was a Sunday night game. It, it, the it, was, it was unbelievable. Okay, so my, my eye test told me in those two games, right. Matt Stafford was all world. Right. But he only made one Pro Bowl. Right. And the harder I look at his resume, this is the God's truth. I looked at this harder and harder last night. And I said, seriously, is he better than Jared Goff? Because I don't think he is. Oh, yeah, he's better than Jared Goff. Okay, well, look at what Jared Goff did. Look at his resume versus Matt Stafford's resume, albeit dysfunctional Detroit. We right. know Barry Sanders quit and walked away on Detroit. Maybe try to he quit, quit and walked walk away. away. Okay, I got it. But Matt Stafford was not able to rise above that right. franchise and lift them into contention. He, right. did ne he never did that. Mm -hmm. Jared Goff, think of think of the great game. I'm I'm not, and I'll toss that word around loosely. He played some great games. It started back in 2017 against my Cowboys at Dallas. Do you right. remember that game? Oh yeah, yeah. When they, they came won from 35 behind. to 30, and and he was sensational mm -hmm. in that game. I mean, he looked like Matt Stafford, right. according to Bruce Arians, in that game. And then how about the game on Monday Night Football that we talked about for two weeks on this show? With Mahomes. He he outdueled Patrick Mahomes. 54 to 51. He threw for 413 and four touchdowns in that game on right. November 19th of 2018. Right. Does that count? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, was that great? And then how about what he did at the end of that season against my Cowboys at the Coliseum? It was 30 to 22. He didn't have a big passing day, but do you remember third and seven at the 28 yeah. with two minutes left mm -hmm. and they are in trouble because right. Dak's coming back. Dak had heated back up and all of a sudden he runs the bootleg that, that Sean McVay, it's the staple of his offense right. and he bootlegs and he bootlegs and he keeps booting and booting and he just keeps running and ran 11 yards for the first down. Skip, I think the biggest difference between Matthew Stafford and Jerry Goff is, is that basically you have to diagram the perfect play for Jerry Goff in order for it to be successful. And that's not the case for Matthew Stafford. You can get off script. See, if I, if I don't, if, if I, if I just need Stafford to make a play okay. by time and make a play, he can do that. And Sean, and Sean McVay was not so sure after seeing what he had saw, mistake after mistake, and it's the same mistakes. That's what irritate coaches, Skip. It's the same mistake. Jared, take care of the ball. Okay. Jared, don't turn it over okay. here. That what same do do? team led by Jared Goff went to New Orleans for the NFC Championship yeah. game, and there was an obviously outrageously controversial yes. call at right. the end of the, of what, regulation? Yes. Yes, but it goes overtime, and Jared Goff out Drew Brees at Drew Brees yeah. in that game to get them to the Super Bowl. His QBR was 68, Drew's was 55 right. in that game. But, but okay? Skip, we, but, I, I'm just saying he did that. But you and I had talked about the last couple of playoff games, Drew had not been what the Drew early on in New Orleans. I, I got it. Okay, I got it. You're but, right. But... But here's the thing, Skip. At some point in time, Sean McVay, you could tell Sean McVay was go growing frustrated okay, well, with where Jerry Goff. He hit bottom was in the Super Bowl yes. against Tom Brady. Yes. And Brady wasn't much better than Jared Goff, right. but he had one drive in the middle of the fourth right. quarter that won the football right. game. And Jared Goff stunk the whole way. Yes. And it's possible that Sean McVay stunk the whole way, right? right? Because right. he took a lot of the blame after the yeah, game. Well, you did. He has to understand the game and not take the, the risk because once Coach Belichick de determines how the game is going to be played, he, accordingly, well, that's not what Sean McVay did. And Sean McVay learned a valuable lesson 
that, okay, this game is going to be played like this. I got to alter my game plan. But that kid, number nine, and I call him a kid because he's significantly younger than I am, Skip. Mm. He's special now. And I don't believe, with the exception of Jim Caldwell, that he had the best head coach and the best coaching in okay. Detroit. All right, you could argue that. But I'm going to finish on Jared Goff. He at least got them to the Super Bowl. Yes, he and did then last that. year, he led them up to Seattle. They went 10 and 6 during mm-hmm. the regular season, and they. They beat Seattle at Seattle. He didn't put up big numbers in that game, but he was the winning quarterback right. in that game. Right. Okay? So I, I'm still, my jury is way out on whether Matt Stafford has better intangibles, big game intangibles, than Jared Goff did. Because every time it was a big game, he played pretty to very well. Maybe over the long haul, he's not good enough for, in Sean McVay's mind to right. go win the Super Bowl, right. right? I tell you what you're about to find out. Okay. How good his intangibles are, and okay. can't whether or not okay. he's Well, guess game. what? This is very arguably the biggest yes. game of Matt Stafford's career because he's never no going question. to have felt nope. the kind of focus and spotlight and pressure. This is it. This is a preview, very potentially, of the NFC, NFC Championship correct. game. This is very possible a a Super Bowl predictor, as in win the Super Bowl, because whoever wins this game could be in the catbird seat yes. to, to go right on and win the Super Bowl. Yes. Am I right about I that? I agree. And I will say this. I'm going to give you credit for this. Tom Brady, in, in his remarks yesterday about this game, was as effusive as I have ever heard him about an opponent. And I don't think it was just pregame hocus pocus. Mm-hmm. I don't think he was trying to set up the Rams for the kill right. here. I, I think he knows that this defense is his kryptonite they, 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 because yeah. they did a number on him. Mm-hmm. He barely threw for two, what was it, 216 in right. the game on Monday night mm-hmm. back at Tampa. And he just, he had a long, hard night. Right. And obviously it was a little different personnel, still Aaron Donald right. and a different coordinator, Wade Phillips in the Super Bowl. Right. But Tom had a long, hard afternoon right. in that game, didn't right. he? Yes. Okay. So he, he went off yesterday about this is as challenging as it's getting for him, as it's ever been for him, because they do such a good job of disguising coverages, but they also have a great pass rush. So he says, you really can't pick up on anything pre-snap because they're holding disguises. And at the same time, they have a pass rush that gets home really quickly. Right. Okay, and then he compliments all the DBs because they disguise, but they keep eye on quarterback right. so they can break on the ball quicker than other units that he's up against. Right. So he raved about them, and you can say you always discount everything Brady says like it's all calculated mm-hmm. or just completely sanitized for the sake of building up to the game. Well, I think the thing is he feels very comfortable with the unit that he's taking in there, but he understands what the Rams, anytime you have an Aaron Donald who's a top a top five player in football. You have a Jalen Ramsey, in many regards, the best defensive back who can take away your best receiver and not we can play, we can zone it off everywhere else and he can take your best guy and okay. take your man. They have pieces, Skip, okay. that can cause problems and they have an offense that can score points. Because, Skip, the likelihood of you winning a, a what, a 14-10 game or a 17-14 ball game against this team is not very good. So you're going to have to have a quarterback that can go match. If you look at Brady in the Super Bowl game, Skip, you look at the last Super Bowl he lost, Nick Foles basically matched him throw for throw. And that's what your Eli. Eli I mean, whose fault was that? Right. Belichick. But I'm, I'm just saying, Skip, you have Remember, to match him. But Malcolm Butler was on the bench. Oh, my goodness, Well, Skip. inexplicably, unaccountably <laughs> on the bench the whole game. It's a little sabotage. Here, but go ahead. <laughs> you keep saying <laughs> sabotage. But you, you're going to have to score points. And you're going to have to steal. You have to get a possession. Tom Brady, normally when you beat him, you steal a possession from you him do? just like you do Patrick Mahomes. Okay. So your score is what? I got 32. I got 33-32 Rams. <laughs> By one point? Yeah. After all that that you just spewed all over hold the on, table? Hold on. You talk about they got I'm, the, I'm about to see the real Matt Stafford hold on, rise hold on, and shine. Hold, hold on. 33 the, the to reigning, 32. The, hold on. This is the reigning Super Bowl team. Yeah. A team, a guy that you say is going to throw for 50 touchdowns, going to win the MVP this year, and going to win back-to-back Super Bowls. No yeah. AB, no JPP. Those are both huge. You, you said AB's not that big a loss. I t- completely no, disagree. No, I think you agree that JPP is a huge loss. Yes. Yeah. I believe he's a bigger loss than what the Cowboys had last week going into the game. Okay, I'll buy that. But that's still, that's still, hold on. The one guy you don't bet against 
If he's that, he should be able to cover all that up. He's mm. got to be deodorant. He's, and the, he's 44 years oh, old. Oh, see, not see coming what you off do. MCL surgery. Oh, my and God. he's already back. A lot of guys would be waiting to what, what, what does Pro Football Smoker say? What mm. does FedEx say? Mm. FedEx been ma mailing him awards the last yep. two weeks. So what's the problem? No problem. Okay, I'm, I'm standing by my okay, pick. Dear. I am going 30 to 28. And if Brady can get to 30 against this defense, I, I'm going to be in awe. I'm usually in awe on Monday, but this is going to be like bow down, like he, genuflect. Skip, I gave him 32. Okay, I don't know how you could give him 32 with no A.B. Little Scotty Miller, Tyler Johnson is a second-year kid. They're, they're all pretty good, mm -hmm. but they're not Antonio Brown. I told you that it, it was – I was going to base my whole prediction on A.B. having his first breakout game of this season because he, he said – He against the Cowboys. Okay, who did? A.B. No, he did not. Did you not didn't kill him? Skip, he had 100 and something yards in the Chris, touchdown. Chris, he had 40, the 147 yes. yards. Yes. But Chris Godwin was one who just murdered him all night long, until the, especially at the bitter end for 24 Godwin yards. Godwin didn't have more receiving yards than A.B. Okay, but I catches. thought he was the one who made the big catches in that game. But a, what did A.B. have last week? Very few targets and one catch for 17 yards because Tom was saving him for the game of the year, which is this. Well, game. maybe maybe Atlanta focused a little bit more on AB, and all of a sudden Mike Evans goes off. Chris Godwin gets a touchdown. Mm. Gronk gets two more. Yep. Okay. So again, the only small advantages I think I have is remember John Johnson left and went to Cleveland. Right. And Troy Hill, the best slot corner, I think, in the right. league, left and went to Cleveland. Right. I don't know how Cleveland got both of them, but they did. Right. Okay, so maybe they're slightly vulnerable there, and you think my secondary is definitely oh, vulnerable. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you definitely But vulnerable. we had a little revelation. We found a little godsend in the fourth quarter the other day because Mike Edwards, the backup safety, started to play nickelback. And when he got inserted into that role, what happened? Two pick sixes in the fourth quarter do, happened. Do you really want him guarding Cooper Cup or well, Robert Woods? Okay, you, you, you're going to have to. <laughs> okay. Well, he's just going to okay. have to. Okay. And you're going to have to zone him up, and you're going to have to play too deep, and you're just going to have to hope that you keep everything underneath you and keep them to a low roar. Right. Bottom line, I believe that in the end, Brady will make one more play than Matt Stafford. And I believe in the end, you will see Matt Stafford get revealed, and I would go so far as to say exposed, as the guy who will make one big mistake in a game of this magnitude on this stage for his first time ever. Well, he said, Skip, when he came to the Rams, he said, I want to be in big games. I want to play in these big well, it's moments. one thing to say it. Now you well, got to well, we do it. And, yep. and, and I was talking, I believe, Skip, this is, this is not a playoff game, Skip. It's only the third week. Okay, but we but know it's going to feel like it. We know the stakes. Absolutely. Yeah. We know the stakes here. We're talking 425 Eastern on Fox. No mercy. Sam Darnold threw for over 300 yards and ran for two rushing touchdowns in the Panthers' 24-9 win over the Texans last night. The former Jets quarterback now has Carolina sitting at 3-0 and is doing a good job revitalizing his career from a disappointing run in New York after the third overall pick in 2018. A draft class that was headlined by number one overall pick Baker Mayfield. Now, Shannon, at the time, you were big on Darnold as the best QB in that draft, and Skip was big on Baker. So have you guys changed your mind? I have not. Um, I like what I saw. As you saw last night, Skip, it wasn't solely his fault because he's not in the Jets, and the Jets are still struggling. I believe it shows you when you put talent around a player, you give him competent coaching and somewhat blocking. Now, his offensive line is still challenging Carolina, but nothing like it was at the Jets. This kid can play, Skip, and I'm not saying he's going to be Mahomes. I'm not saying he's going to be Tom Brady or one of these historically great quarterbacks, but I'm saying he's a competent quarterback. They made it seem like the kid was a bust, and I'm saying he's not a bust. He doesn't have any talent. You take all of his talented players and you, tr you let Robbie Anderson walk out the door. He doesn't have any talent. Now you look what he has around him. That kid, DJ Moore, can play. Robbie Anderson is there. Terrence Marshall Jr., the, uh, out of LSU, who uh, uh, the offensive coordinator knew firsthand. Good the pick. tight end. Yep. Now they got Christian McCaffrey, even though he got nicked up, Skip. They got pieces around him, so he doesn't feel like he has to do everything. And Matt Rule is a very good offensive mind. He seems to be well on his way to being a very good head coach. And by the way, their defense is serious. Yes, their defense. Yeah. <sighs> I, I'm, I'm going to hold out on that, Skip. Okay, because but the pass rush is yeah. legit. It's just they got two stud rushers. Uh, the Texans and I think, who else did they beat? They beat the Texans. So Jacksonville. I'm, Jacksonville, yeah. Skip, so, so, you know, 
and they caught Jameis by surprise and just annihilated yeah, him, just turned him inside out. They beat his offensive line yeah, up too, Skip. Did. So with that, when you look at what Baker has around him, Sam Darnold, the entire while he was in New York, he had zero pro bowlers and Adam Gase as his head coach. Baker's had seven selections. Jarvis mm. has two. Batonio has three. Chubb has two. Mm. So, Skip, if you surround him now, they also gave him OBJ. They also added Kareem Hunt. They also gave him Austin Hooper. The best offensive line in football, an outstanding defense to back him up. So, when you give, give Sam Darnold that, Baker has always had more talent than this kid. You go back to Ohio, uh, uh, Oklahoma and look at the talent around him and go to USC and look at the talent around Sam Darnold. So, for me, Skip, I think he's acquitted himself. I'm not really saying they're a playoff team, mm. but I think he's showing people that if you surround a young player with, uh, with talent and you give him time, Skip, he can be well. So, the, so don't give up on these young quarterbacks. That's not, they're not, Skip. We look at Lawrence and we look at Wilson and we look at some of these others. They're like, no, you got to give them some talent and you got to put an offensive line around them or you, they're going to get the hell beat out of them and they're going to look bad. But I like this kid. I like what I saw last night and I believe he's well on his way. Okay. Let's start at the sort of bottom, so to speak, of the quarterbacks picked. Okay. There was this kid named Lamar Jackson. Yes. At oh, well, Lamar, Lamar. Okay. Lamar. Okay. I'm, I'm just oh, going okay. to just to throw him out. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about this. This. this I, this. I didn't. I didn't see him coming. Yeah. No. We nobody saw that. I, I, I watched him against Deshaun at Clemson, and he fell apart at the end of the game. And I was like, I don't know. I'm just not sure. Can he stay healthy? If it because he listen. Running wise, and he he was a pinpoint accurate passer, right. but he didn't seem to have his big arm. That now now he's got a big arm right. to me, mm -hmm. plenty enough arm. Right. Okay. So nobody saw exactly that. Maybe Ozzy did, as in yeah. Ozzy Newsom. Yeah, well, well Ozzy. <laughs> yeah, clearly he saw your it. personnel director, who's now sort of graduated upstairs. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He got okay. he got a big 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 office. Okay. So we know about Lamar, but mm -hmm. I'm going to put him in context here. You have had your issues with him. Right. Can you be? consistently accurate throwing right. the football? Can you win games throwing the football? Right. You've been unsure about it at certain I stages. I have, but I would still take Lamar over Baker. Okay, I, I made that I got clear. It. But let's be clear about what Lamar has done. In the postseason, he is one and three. Right. And the three were stinkers, mm -hmm. right? Against Mahomes, he is now one and three because he lost the first three right. badly. Right. Okay, so the point is, at the highest levels... He, he hasn't been great yet. I thought he was great the other night because I don't know how they came back and won that game, and yet they wouldn't have won that game if Edwards Hilaire had not gotten stripped with a minute and right. 29 seconds right. left because the game was about to be way over. Well, right? think about what your guy had. Your guy had him down 22 to 10. Baker had had uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes down 22 to 10. He did. They came back and won. Okay. Patrick I Mahomes had Lamar down by 11. And then that guy came back okay. and won. And also, before I get to my man Baker, Josh Allen has been very good, better than I thought he would be. Yes. I'm still not completely sold. I need to see him at the highest level. Right. We'll see. He's gotten to pretty high levels. Yeah, he and got the championship game last year. And, and yet, in that game, he wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. Now back to Baker. I continue to tell you that, that down the stretch last year, over the last 11 games, he went from his progressive commercials, which I was calling regressive commercials, <laughs> to growing up before your very eyes. Right. Was it a coincidence that Odell was gone, he got hurt at Cincinnati, and that stretch happened, that 8-3 and three run happened with no Odell? Was was Baker a little too Odell centric, a little too Odell conscious, a little too hung up on? I got to get him involved. To, to again, he loves him off the field. They're friends, and did did that hurt his distribution of the football? Did he hold the ball too long trying to get it to Odell? I say yes. But over that stretch, he was 20 touchdowns to only three interceptions. And over that stretch, your favorite website, Pro Football Focus, graded him the fourth best quarterback in pro football behind your man Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun, and my man Brady. Fourth in that stretch. I thought he was sensational. They beat Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh. And then you know the rest of the story. They right. went to Kansas City, and you said, well, he should have risen up. He had, yeah. on any given Sunday, right. he had him in the game right. late and couldn't overcome that even. Okay, so I got that. But my gut tells me that Baker will prove to be the best in this draft class, and I'm not going to back off that because as well as Sam Darnold has played so far, and I give you – new cast of characters that's much better than the supporting cast in New York. I yes. give you that. Okay. But I can't give you Jacksonville, and 
And again, Jameis just unraveled right. like like that was as bad as I've ever seen Jameis play, including the the bad games right. at Tampa. Right. Because they got shell shocked. They they weren't ready for it, and it was an onslaught. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not sure that was about Sam Darnold. He played very well. And then last night, there's no Tyrod Taylor in there. Right. It's Davis Mills, and he kind of hung in and did the best right. he could. But he was under fire the whole night. But Skip, even even if those guys were out and he was with the Jets, they still would. They normally lose games like this because I don't think okay. the talent around him and the competency of the All coaching right. staff was in place to help him. Okay, I, I give you that. Gut feeling on your man, Sam Darnold, and everybody's man, because most people, the consensus was he should have gone first in the draft, mm -hmm. right? That's right. all I ever heard. And I think a lot of people are rooting for him in the analytics business because they put their reputations on the line and they're saying, aha, right. now you're seeing what he should have been if he'd gone to a better right. team. Okay, what do I see from him even last night against the Texans? He never looks comfortable to me in the pocket. With that he, offensive line, he okay. shouldn't be. All right, but but again, he he doesn't have natural pocket poise. He never seems completely in command. Even when he had time to throw, he's helter-skelter to me. His body language is a little nervous to me. And he made some great throws last he, night. He, he made a couple of third down throws right. where I said, that's big time. Yeah, well, Skip, he missed a couple of throws early on. He did. He thought it was cover two, and it was quarters coverage. The safety yep. was closer, and it wasn't split safeties. They were hash safeties, and he missed it. And then they came right back around a similar play, and it's too deep, perfect. He should have hit the tight end, and he didn't. He didn't. These are the most troubling spots to me beyond what you just detailed. I've always said that even at USC, when I watched him a lot, he was a mistake maker. Mm -hmm. He would turn the ball over yeah, when, you, when you least expected it. 547 last night in the second quarter, they're up seven to nothing, only seven to nothing. And at the Carolina 29, he got rocked and he lost the football. And he was lucky that his center fell on the football because if he doesn't, they're going to have the ball at Carolina's 29 with right. a very short field. Right. Okay. And here comes the second one. 19 seconds left in the half at his own 28 yard line. He gets stripped again. He gets stripped. He does not see eye side right. pass rusher and gets stripped and his center recovers it again and saves the day or they would have had a short field field goal at the end of the half. The score at that point was only seven to six right. Carolina. But if you notice, Skip, the difference is you see how he has the ball holding down here and what they teach you is to hold the ball here. Okay. And that's I, something I that it. he's going to, I'm sure Matt Rule is going to stress that with him when they reconvene, probably on Monday. He's like, I'm going to need you to, Skip, you got to protect you got to okay. protect the ball. Okay, I got it. But what I'm saying is they were very fortunate, very fortunate that yeah. they dodged those two bullets because the game was in Houston right. and the crowd's not real into the home team because they got the Deshaun cloud hanging right. over the franchise right. and Tyrod can't play and you got a rookie from Stanford third right. rounder playing who, who's got some ability, but he was a little over his head last well, night. Well, Skip, it's hard to evaluate him when the yep. offensive line that he goes back and as soon as he takes his last step. <laughs> okay, he, okay. I mean, he, I got Skip, it. he taking shots like that. I'm not so sure some of those shots were okay. would, would have been targeted in okay. college. But if they could have taken it home on a short field at seven to nothing and yeah tied it, the crowd's going to get in the game. Right. And if they could have cashed in a late field goal in the second quarter, who knows? They could have gone to half with, with some kind of lead. Right. Well, then maybe the crowd really gets into the game and an upset is brewing. He, he put them in harm's way. And sometimes, as you know, fumbles, like I talked about the Zach Martin recovery at right. Chargers, mm -hmm. sometimes it's just lucky bounce right. or unlucky bounce, right? Does yep. your offensive line suddenly see the live grenade under their feet right. and fall on the football, right. center fell back on the football twice and saved it, or we could have been having a very different conversation. Yes. That's what scares me the most about Sam Darnold. But you have to admit, Skip, he looks different in Carolina than he did with the Jets. You have to concede that. He, he, looks, he looks like a competent quarterback <sighs> okay. with talent and coaching. I got it. But as Troy Aikman kept pointing out last night, it will be very interesting to gauge his progress a week from Sunday at Jerry World against my Cowboys. Right. Unfortunately for Sam Darnold, the player he needed most to, to ride shotgun with him to Dallas has Remember, got a hamstring right. pull, and I don't know if right. he'll be able to bounce back in right. time for that. I, again, I'm a Cowboy fan. I hope not. I'm going to knock on wood. I love Christian McCaffrey. We had him on the show at the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And 
he, he's a great kid. You right. watched him grow up. We're going to talk about him a little bit more later. Mm -hmm. So I hate this for him, but I don't hate it for my team because right. J.C. Horn, who I think the Cowboys were, he, were he sitting He lived off the field. Uh, well, he's got a broken foot, and it looked like an Achilles to me yeah. because I've never seen a broken foot occur in the open field yeah. backpedaling. Yeah, he was just backpedaling. What? And it what? Like buckled on him. What? I don't yeah. know, but I was just happy for him that it wasn't. That's classic Achilles right. there, right? But here's the thing, Skip. We were going to find out a lot more about Carolina because who's in that division? Tampa. They didn't need Dallas to, to, to gauge them. They got two games. Again. Okay, but they're late. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're two of the last three last games game, on the schedule. So we were going to find out sooner or later. But like I said, Skip, I just think the thing is, from what I've seen, I like the kid coming out of college, and I just felt that he went to a very – and most, Skip, most – you get drafted that high – you're going to a bad team. Yep. It's not like you're going to the reigning Super Bowl champs. You get drafted with the third overall pick. Yep. It ain't happening. Okay. So and with that being said, he looks like a competent quarterback with coaching. Yep. And DJ Moore is, 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 is can flat out play. Okay, Robbie, and speaking of, just for the record, I campaigned, you won't remember this, before the 2018 draft. Uh -huh. I campaigned for Jerry Jones to take DJ Moore at 19. He went 24th to Carolina. Mm -hmm. That's pre-Amari right. and pre-Gallup. So. Yeah. I didn't know what I had or didn't have, right. but I just love DJ Moore, and right. I love him more now. We took Van Der Esch at 19, obviously. So He played well for you. Uh, for, for a little, little while. while. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Skip, but let's talk about your Cowboys, because everybody is getting on the Micah Parsons bandwagon, including former Cowboys QB and Fox lead NFL analyst Troy Aikman, who implied Dallas could be happier with the linebacker than one of the cornerbacks who were drafted before him. Aikman said, quote, I love the guy. He's a great player from what I've seen already. I hate to use the term early in his career. We got to know him through hard knocks. We got to kind of see behind the face mask and see a guy who loves the game. He's got a personality that I think energizes a locker room. So Shannon, is this too much hype too soon? Who is driving this train very early on, Skip, before they even drive with you? <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. I you mean, contributed <laughs> to the rise of the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, Skip, if you watch the kid play, then you watch his measurables, they line up. You saw a kid that was explosive. You saw a kid that was sudden. You saw a kid that was impactful, that could, that could run. And he ran, he jumped, he lifted. Okay, they match. Skip, this kid has to make him to be something special. Okay, but Shannon Sharp, you've been doing this for a long time, and you know two games yeah. is just it, two little it, games. Exactly. That's why I'm not willing to skip the hype. It, he should be getting hype because he's playing extremely well. But I want to hold off with this great talk because we throw we throw great around after one game. We throw and we start it, somebody right. have a good. Oh, he great. He he the best. This he the best. That after two games, Skip. The kid looks like he's the real deal yep. because, like you said, he's versatile. And mm -hmm. that's the one thing you need. Usually someone that's versatile, he can play in the middle. He can put his hand in the dirt. Yep. He can drop in coverage. Yep. So he can do all three. He can do three things really, really well. Yep. And he's only going to get better as his knowledge and understanding of the game, True. as his film study gets better. And he can hone in. Yep. And he can pattern. Because that's what the really good ones can do. Yep. They can formation read. Mm -hmm. And knows out of this formation, this is what they like to do. I'm going to get a head start. I'm going to beat them to the punch. So it looks to me, Skip, like he is the real deal. And going to be the real deal for a long time. And I told you, you like, man, I want Pat Sertain. And it looks like they're going to take J.C. Horn. I say, Skip, the best defensive player in this draft is this kid. And if you get him, you're going to be you're going to be. You're going to look back five, six years from now and be like, yeah, I'm okay. glad we missed okay. this guy. I had Wolf Hunter, and I had what was left of Jalen Smith, and they were signing Keanu Neal to play linebacker. The last thing I needed was another linebacker, unless he's that linebacker. I give you the prime example. Yeah. You had Amari. We you did. had Gallup. Well, that's but what, what I did you said. say? Okay. You, we need CD because we don't have okay. that. And you blasted us <laughs> yes. for taking a non-need position. Right. And I, I needed a desperately. I needed a cornerback. I needed the Bama bookend right. to go with Trevon Diggs. Right. And I'm thinking, ah, oh, and your Denver Broncos snatched him right mm -hmm. out from under our nose. Right. And Jerry peels back. He trades back right. with the Eagles all the way to 12. 
And are you sure? Are you sure the Bears, when they trade up there, are you sure they're going to take a quarterback? Well, Skip, I, I'm not so sure that the Broncos wouldn't have taken this kid had Von Miller not returned. They wanted Von to take a pay cut. He said no. They stuck with him for one more year. He's on the last year. Yep. But I'm not so sure had they released Von or traded Von, I'm not so sure the Broncos yep. doesn't take this kid because he's so versatile. But I'm not ready to say great because it's only two games. But, Skip, from what I've seen, this kid has a ceiling that's as big as so as big as Jerry's dome. Okay. So that's how high thank his you. ceiling is. Thank you for saying that, and I appreciate I thank you eternally <laughs> for touting me on Micah Parsons. I liked him because he opted out right. his last year at Penn right. State, COVID. I, I didn't know for right. sure. I saw flashes the year before. Right. I'm not sure I saw this. Right. And just to reiterate what our man Troy Aikman said on his Dallas radio gig, he, he said, I love the guy. He's a great player from what I've seen already. And then he tried to check himself because Troy's been doing this for a yeah. long time like you. And he said, I hate to use that term early in his career, but <laughs> yeah. you're seeing greatness. Yes. You're seeing, as Troy went on to say, special. Right. So to cap this off and drive it home. The, the, uh, to tell you why I'm okay with the hype, because I think yeah. this young man is going to live up and surpass the hype. I have a quick story about our friend, Little Wayne. Mm -hmm. I was communicating with Little Wayne last night about did he have any big plans for his birthday? And let us say a pre-happy birthday, right. Dwayne. It's Monday, right. the 27th. Happy birthday, Little Wayne. Okay. And I'm thinking, do you have any special plans? And he, he details for me what, what is a birthday bonanza of a coast-to-coast -coast sports trip. Right. And it starts on Saturday at Boston because he's a huge Red Sox fan. Right. And it's Red Sox versus Yankees. And that starts at 4 o'clock Eastern time at Boston. Right. That's Saturday. Sunday, he's going to be all the way on the left coast at San Francisco to watch his Packers play against a, a coach he's very close with, your man Kyle Shanahan. Mm -hmm. So his emotions are mixed, but he bleeds green. Yes. And so he will be rooting for the Packers. I don't think he'd be crushed if Kyle pulled it off because right. he also likes Kyle very much yes. and respects him highly. Right. So then he caps it off by telling me, and guess what? On Monday night, his birthday night, he's going to Jerry World. And I said, wait a second, you call them the cowgirls. You hate Dallas. Yeah, he said, but I got to see Micah live. I got to see Micah live? <laughs> Listen, this man, Dwayne Carter, has as high a sports IQ of mm -hmm. anybody I know. Mm -hmm. He is a deep thinker when it comes to sports, and he often sees trends before they happen. Right. He saw Steph Curry way before it happened when he was at Davidson. Right. and was touting to me, and I was along with him on this one, that he should be the first pick in the draft. He's, he's often like that. He sees it coming. For him to tell me he has to go to Jerry World to see live my man, Micah Parsons, mm -hmm. even though he despises everything Dallas Cowboys, right is significant to me right. because it shows you Wayne sees it coming. Mm -hmm. Well, so do I. But again, because I've been burned so many times, I, I've been doing this for so long, two games is a mere two games. <laughs> yeah, the two but games, do yeah. I see it? Yes. Yes, yes. I see it. Yeah. Did, did I have any problem when he, he, he says, I'm a lion, a lion's got to eat? No, nope, because I see him eat. Yeah. Did I have a problem when he said the other day, I'm the Terminator. Right. I got a hit list. Right. Now, Jalen Hurts is on my hit list. Right. Did I have a problem? You didn't have a problem no. because he's backing it up. No. They put, I, I campaigned last Friday. Please put him in, hand down in the dirt. Right. Put him on the edge because he will keep the offense on edge right. because it's just hard to find him and see him right. and block him. Well, well, Skip, I think the thing is, and, and Troy mentioned this, Hard Knocks gave us a glimpse into this we who the young man was. We did. It, it's, yes. it's nice to know the story behind the story. We Because a lot of times, Skip, we just see these guys, okay, oh, he's great. But we got a, a little glimpse inside how this, his mom comes to all the games. He had all the guys. I said, Skip, this is leadership. I mean, hey, you talk about a rookie, and he's inviting all the vet players over, and his mom is cooking. Yep. That's what Ray Ray did for yep. the linebackers. But Ray was a seven, was a five, six year vet at the time he started doing it. this. Yep. So now you see, yep. and to see to watch him run, and to watch the suddenness. The, it, Skip, like I said, it's two games, but he looks like he the real deal.
And some guys, as we saw in the very first preseason game, just have a nose for the football. Yeah. I can't explain it. I, I can't. I, there, you can't teach it. Right. You can't coach it. Right. It's a gift. You just happen to be around the football. Remember the first preseason game? He's yeah. all over the field. Right. He's creating right. havoc. I remember, Skip, I remember the first time I saw Devin White. And Devin White got suspended for the first half of the Alabama game. Yes. And Alabama was running the ball right down their throat. And this 40 kid from LSU comes in in the second half because he had got suspended the week before for targeting. And he shut it down. <laughs> I said, that kid can play. Yep. And I was like, man, Bronk, I think we have like 10 or something. I said, man, I sure hope we can get Devin White. Nope. They're like, no, nah, you're not getting Devin White. Devin White. I think he went off the board at like five in yep. Tampa. Mm -hmm. he, has this, he has that kind of ability. He has Devin White type ability. Sideline to sideline, he can rush the pass. I think he might be a little better pass rusher because he played on the edge a little bit more. I would agree. Devin, he, he's a little more bendable. Yeah. yeah. Devin is more of uh, the middle backer, Explosive, come up the middle, right yeah, up, yeah. To, to yeah. run your backs mm -hmm. over. But this kid can beat offensive linemen. This kid's going to beat tight ends and get sacks. Mm -hmm. So looking at him and having played the game and no, and no players when I see him, Skip, he looks like he's the real deal. I feel very comfortable saying, Skip, he's going to be a player. Mm. And I'm not, and like I said, I, I felt that you, when you, we had this conversation, who's going to be rookie defensive player of the year? I'd say, this kid right here. Mm. This kid right here. This kid well, he's, he's, he's off to the races yeah, this, because this, Pro Football Focus says they grade him the best of yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, right? he, he's the real, for two games, Skip, he's been the real deal. We got 15 more to go. I don't see it, I don't see, I don't see it slacking off. Mm. So our man Troy Aikman concludes, we may look back on this one and say, wow, how fortunate were the Cowboys that they didn't have one of those corners when they were available. Thank you. Bingo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank God for Micah Parsons. I told you. I said, the best thing is what's going to happen, the, uh, some other team going to save Jerry from himself. Because if one of those two corners was there, I don't care what Jerry said. Oh, he the best player on that board. Jerry was going to take either J.C. Horn or Patrick Sertan. No <laughs> doubt. And I would have had no problem with that. Right. And now, Until you saw Michael Parsons play in somebody else's uniform and realized you could have had that. And I told you before this year started, he will change the way yeah. we play defense, yeah. and he is doing that yeah. now. Thank you. No mercy. Tom Brady Sr. said his son feels vindicated for succeeding without Bill Belichick. TB12's trainer Alex Guerrero took a shot at the New England coach saying that, quote, he never evolved and still treated Tom like a 20-year-old kid. Yesterday, Brady addressed those comments. Take a listen. That's just part of um, being in sports and you have a lot of people who, um, you know, because they're not out there, they, they want to protect and it's a very uh, caring, loving thing that a lot of people do. But, you know, from my standpoint, I just... I had a great time. Shannon, are Brady's father and trainer speaking for the quarterback or just for themselves? Well, let me see it for just a second. This man spent 20 years, and uh, what he could muster up, I had a great time. Mm. Okay. He, he went on to say a few more things, <laughs> but yeah. Skip, let me tell you how this thing is. I've been telling you. you, you so 20 years is a long time, but go ahead. But again, what yeah. I tell you, Skip, no, no. I say with somebody, with somebody close to somebody speaking. You did say that. They're saying what Tom can't say still because this, this is what Tom has shared with them. Mm -hmm. When Giselle said Tom can't throw and catch the ball, don't think Tom has not said on a given night, laying in bed next to his wife, baby, I can't throw it and catch it. And when she got upset, they lost that game. She, did. she said what that. What she said, he can't yeah. throw and catch it. Yeah. So what? Brady's dad. That was the second Eli Super Bowl. Yes, that was the yep. one in Indy. Yep. What Tom Brady Sr. said, what Guerrero said, are things that Tom Brady has verbalized to them. Normally, Skip, if a court, if, normally if the quarterback is, a, obviously Brady was a six-round pick, so he doesn't have the cachet of the Peyton Manning that came in as the number one overall draft pick. But once that guy wins the Super Bowl, there's a certain level of respect and a certain level of reverence that he gets inside that locker room yep. and with inside that organization. Well, you would like to think. But Coach Belichick said no. So mm -hmm. Tom says, you know what? I'm going to do it again. I'm gonna get, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to um, get three of these things in five years, and then I know he's going to treat me like the man that I am. Mm -mm. Mm. He's like, well, wait a minute. Well, maybe, maybe it's because I'm still in my 20s. Mm. Maybe if I settle down, I get me a wife. You know, so I got three Super Bowls. I got a wife. I got kids. I know damn well this man ain't finna still treat me like a kid. Mm. Baby, he still treat me like, Dad, can you believe this? That this man yelled at me, called me out in front of my teammates after what? He's still winning cures all. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. 
win winning will band-aid and mask a lot of things. And eventually, if you got an eight-inch gas, you can you can you know put a gauze or you know, put apply pressure. Mm -hmm. But sooner or later, you're gonna have to treat it. He kept treating Tom. He kept treating Tom like that. But Skip, that's the way he, he feels. Coach Belichick feels the only way that he can keep his thumb on that team is to treat everybody the same. Mm -hmm. No matter how accomplished, he treats Tom Brady, the best guy in that locker room, just like the 53rd guy. Mm -hmm. guy. And Tom says, you know what? I can't do this anymore. Mm. I deserve better. So don't think for one second. Don't do what you don't know. I'm telling you, I feel very, very comfortable. I'm willing to stake my reputation that Tom Brady has shared what they said with them. And though Tom can't say it, Skip, because he's still like, but well, I can't believe Tom would say that. He got people say, Tom said, I got people that love and care about it. I got people protect. that love and care they and protect, protect me. You're right, Tom. They doing the blocking for you. They your Anthony Munoz, Jonathan Ogden. <laughs> they doing the blocking and you throwing the passes. Mm -hmm. Skip, but here's the thing. Everybody say, Tom has changed since he got to New England. I mean, to Tampa. No, he ain't. This has always been Tom. Coach Belichick made him suppress that. You remember that? that uh, and I'm going to turn over you, Skip. You remember that uh, footage when they had Patrick Mahomes sandwiched in the Super Bowl and Tom tweeted out, that looked like it hurt. <laughs> That's Tom Brady. That's <laughs> always been Tom Brady. Now he's free to spread his wings. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to read Tell me, tell me, why would you do that? You know, Coach Belichick going to browbeat him. Why you do that? That's not the way we do it. That's the Patriot way. Tom Brady said, no, they're my way. Mm. And my way, I, I like my way a little better. Mm. I'm free from you. Okay, <laughs> here, everything you just said. Now I got a more timely question. Okay. Do you believe that Brady Sr., who did an interview with Boston TV, actually, yeah. but it was a phone interview. Mm -hmm. Do you believe Brady Sr. this week and Alex Guerrero, the trainer, this week, let Tom know that they had been requested to do interviews. Yeah. Obviously, Guerrero did the Boston Globe, yeah. right? Did yeah. they let Tom know, yeah. hey, I have a request. Are you okay if I do this interview? Yes. And furthermore, do you think they went so far as to say, are you okay if I tell the truth yeah. about Belichick? Yeah, of course. Okay? Of course. What's fascinating to me is it's not Patriot Week yet. It's the Rams at the Rams. This is what I believe is going to shape up and last as the game of the year in the NFC, right? right? Mm -hmm. It's Bucks defending champs at Rams, a team that you think can at least challenge them, yes. if not beat them Absolutely. and get to the Super yes. Bowl, right? Yes. This is this is in all the marbles. Obviously, it's not do or die, right. but it's going to set the tone for the rest of the year. Right. And don't you, you know, don't think Brady doesn't right. get that, right? Yet. The inner circle's focus is on a week from Sunday because for them, that's the game of the year times 10. And don't think that guy that's playing this week on Sunday in the game of the week on Fox, don't think his focus okay. isn't a week from Sunday. All right. So do you believe, Mr. Hall of Famer, that Brady is going to be slightly distracted as he tries to prepare for the Rams with half a mind in no. Foxborough? Mm -mm. You don't think no. so? No, he laughing. He's like, I love this. Nigga, I love this right here. Because, you know, right now, because Skip, he's like, theoretically, we don't know Brady said that. That's just them speaking on, that's what, that was their, what they surmised yep. was the difference, what was the problem that caused the conflict. Okay. But Tom was like, yep. Okay, what Couldn't I say believe, better myself. to use your analogy, the eight-inch gash in his forearm it remains open. Yeah, it is an open wound that has festered. That winning couldn't cure. Could not cure. But he did. He was driven to win a Super Bowl in year one during the pandemic with a torn MCL mm -hmm. and a 7-9 and nine team from the year right. before called the Suckineers, the most historically bad franchise in all of sports. He did that. Right. And, and now... If you want to go gloat, that's what he's doing. Right, he's gloating. Yeah. He is rubbing it in. Yes. And he actually, during Rams week, is fine with the two key members of right. his inner circle, right. his father and his longtime best friend right. trainer. I mean, this is like his personal assistant trainer. He already, got, he already knew what they were going to say. So, so when they asked Tom, Tom, did you hear what uh, your trainer, Alice Guerrero, said? No, what did he say? <laughs> did, Tom, did you hear what your dad said about, on the radio? No, what did he say? I already know what you say. Okay. 
the, the shock is not what they said, but that they said it. Yes. Because n neither of us are surprised at all at the issue at hand, right. which was he would not evolve because he wouldn't treat him any yeah. different way after three Super right. Bowls or right. four Super Bowls or five. Right. It just kept getting worse. I, b I believe that he treated him more harshly the greater he got. Right. And I believe if you put Tom Brady on a lie detector, that he would say now he got jealous of me because I was getting too much of his credit. I used to say all the time, man, I can't wait for Tom Brady to write this book. Because everything, oh, this is so lovely. I mean, this thing is utopia over here. I said, I wait for Tom Brady's book to come out. Mm -hmm. And then he going to really tell you how I feel because he going to put on paper, he gonna, he, we going to get him to see. Yeah, Coach Belichick did this and he didn't treat me like this and I felt I should have got that and he did this. All, everything that the dad and the, mm -hmm. uh, and the trainer is saying, that's how Tom has verbalized that those three people know Tom better than anybody. His wife, his dad, and that trainer. Now, that trainer spent as much time as Ryan Tom. Hell, he might have a house, a guest house in the back quarter, Skip, because he's on call 24. Hey, man, my shoulder. Okay, I'm right over Tom. Mm. Oh, my ham, my hip. Mm. So he's on call. And Skip, when you lay on the massage table, Skip, you're talking. Mm. Yeah, you know, have a tough day this. Dad, you know, what's going on? Yep. I used to talk to my brother. Just so if, 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 you know, I never would, obviously I would never say anything because I know if I say it, they're going to like, man, that came, Shannon said it. We know how close him and his brother is. Or if my sister were to say something, yep. they know where that came from. Mm -hmm. So I, we were very conscious of not to say anything because we know where it's coming from. Mm. So I've had several of Brady's friends over the last six or eight years tell me that it aided Tom, like he would grin and bear it, but that that Bill wouldn't even play golf with him in the off season. They got paired sort of w without them knowing Pebble. it at Pebble Beach right. one time. That's the only time they ever shared a round of golf together, and it was not by their choice. No, Skip, you know what, Skip? The thing is, for me, I don't give a damn about playing no golf with me, but treat me accordingly. Okay, well, but that was the first right. thing where he thought I'd earned the stature to at right. least share a round of golf, right. maybe somewhere up in New England during the summertime right. with him to get a little closer because right. now we're of equal stature because, hey, I've been Super Bowl MVP. PX number right. of times. Uh, aren't we a dynasty? Well, skip it, you, skip okay. you know how this works. Skip, okay. you know it, when it's something like this here. So, as long as somebody got to get somebody, you can't. It can't be 50-50. Someone got to be fifty-one forty-nine now. Okay. Long, and, and Coach Belichick wanted to make it abundantly clear to Tom. This is me, bro. It ain't it's you. Easy. Okay. So now we get to film sessions and practices, right. even in the last couple of years that he played for the dynasty under Belichick in New England. Right. Film studies, he would tear Tom apart yeah. in front of the whole gathered yeah. team. Yeah. It, 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 uh, no quarterback, no John Elway, no Troy no, Aikman, no, no. no Dan Marino. No, they they, they even, just wouldn't stand no, for no, it. No Joe become, Montana. They, 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 they wouldn't sit no, still no, for it. No. To be in a darkened room with the film going, Tom, what, what were you thinking here? Right. Uh, I was actually thinking that I've won five Super Bowl right. MVPs, right? right? That's what he wanted to say. Right. And then during practice, I've been told regularly that Bill would stop practice as the offense, it was offensive day, and say, Tom, what the hell was right. that? Right. Well, you don't talk get, about getting shown up. Shannon Sharp would not stand nah, for nah, that. No, nah. Skip, and I've been in practice where, you know, John might make a mistake or somebody run the wrong route, somebody drop a pass, and Mike was like, hey, run it over, start the drill over. But we, we're not, we're not, we, we're not going to do this. We're seven play into a 10 play drill. drill. And Mike would say, start it over, because that was some you-know-what. Okay, we started over. He didn't call anybody out. We know who dropped the pass. We knew who threw the interception. We knew who run the wrong route. He didn't say it. He didn't have to. No. We just do it over. But to call me out, to continuously call me out, and, chastise and, me. And to call him by his last name. Brady, what are you doing? <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. maybe I'm trying to win another Super Bowl yeah, for you. Yeah. I'm trying to make you look better, yeah. right? So, I'm, and the, the thing is, Skip, I look, and I, I've said this, you know, you treat everybody fair, you don't treat everybody the same. And I think the thing is, is that Tom is smart enough to know that you don't abuse those privileges. I will give you certain perks that the other guys don't get. Yep. But don't become abusive of those privileges. Yep. Tom is not a guy that's going to abuse that. It's not like he go all of a sudden start showing up late for practice, showing up late for work, arriving. You know, no, he's not going to do that. So he's not going to abuse that late. The, the, the plane leaves at three thirty. Here comes sh Tom showing up at three forty five, knowing that the plane's going to wait on him. Nah, he's not going to do that. So you don't have to worry about giving somebody a perk that they're going to take advantage of. It made no sense to me. I understood Skip, and I get it, Tom. Coach Belichick is trying to say, this is the way 
that I can keep everybody in line because I got the head bull in line and then everybody else is going to fall in line behind that. Because if I treat him like that, what the hell you think everybody is expecting to get treated like? If he treat Tom Brady, yep. who's won six Super Bowls mm-hmm. like that, man, you better believe everybody is marching at attention. And he, he, Coach Belichick coached out of fear. Mm-hmm. It's not love. It's not, yeah, he'll pat you on the back, yeah. But he, it's hard for him to say, when they said, uh, well, you know, Tom played really well, you know, everybody played good, real well. Mm-hmm. You know, the defense did well, the coaches coached well. Yep. It's, it's okay if Tom played well, if the running back played well. If not, it's okay to single someone mm-hmm. out. But yep. Coach Bella, that's not what he is, Skip. Okay, and not once did Tom Brady ever publicly rebel or mute no. me on Bill Belichick all the way to the Jacksonville AFC championship yeah. game when he plays the game with 12 stitches in the palm Man, of his throwing hand. that wasn't heart surgery. <laughs> and remember, he had just thrown for 124 in the fourth quarter right. and brought them from 20 to 10 back right. to win the game. What was it, 24 to 20, right. I believe, and send them to yet another yeah. Super Bowl. And Bill's asked about it after the game and just dismisses it. Wasn't exactly yeah. open heart surgery. Hey, but Skip, uh, wait a second. But I give them credit. They put on a brave face. You know, Kyrie was talking about taking the mask off. They kept a mask on for a very long time. Mm-hmm. When they would get together, they, oh, I love Coach Belichick. I wouldn't be here without him. Tommy is a hard worker. You remember, Skip, when they did the, uh, the all did, uh, they, the century they, team? They sat and, 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 and it was old Skip, and they were just a love. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. Lo and behold, Tom gritting his teeth. He was. Coach, don't worry about it, Skip. Coach Belichick gritting his teeth, too. Because he know. See, Tom has the effect. Tom didn't. All Tom wanted to do. He says, if I can just leave here yep. and win one Super Bowl, I can show mm-hmm. that I could have won without him. Yep. That, it went better than he thought. Because not only did he win one, he won it in his first year. Yep. And has lined up to win a possibly win another. Do you remember the old saying, don't get mad, get even? Yes. He is getting even. He is on a revenge tour that ends in Foxborough yeah. a week from Sunday. Yeah. Right? Tom said, I ain't gonna get mad, I'm gonna get ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hey, you you get even. Cause mm. even I can't that would mean I'm ahead of you. I'm ahead right now. Cause right now the score is seven six. Mm. I don't know who's keeping score, but I'm just saying the score is seven six. Super Lombardi. I got seven, you got six. My only surprise is that that he allowed them to do these interviews this week instead of saying, why don't you just hold off until next week? I keep telling you, that's not who he is. Now you get an opportunity to see he's free. Yep. Okay, got it. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> no, yeah. you gotta love yeah. this drama buildup to next weekend's matchup. Yeah. No mercy. In an interview with the LA Times, Clippers owner Steve Ballmer opened up about his team's rivalry with the Lakers, saying, quote, for a long time, the Clippers were nothing, so nobody had to pay attention. And for people who had been Lakers fans forever, there's no threat. We've gotten pretty good. We're actually serious. You can see we're serious. We're not the old screwed up franchise in town. We're coming. We're not cheap and crappy. We're in. So Shannon, on a scale of one to 10, <laughs> how much do you fear the Clippers? <laughs> yes. Steve, you were you worth a hundred bill. They're not cheap. But unfortunately, They're not crappy. But Skip, but unfortunately, you, you can't buy your way to a championship mm-hmm. here. It's a one. And you know this, Skip. This is always going to be a Laker time. You are not threatened at all. None. Because let me tell you why, Skip. Your best player is injury prone, and he's getting older. And as you get older, you don't get healthier. And so that's why I'm unconcerned. And it's not like guys are lining up. Because remember, KD said no. Kyrie said no. Jimmy Butler said no. So it's not like these superstar guys are lining up to come play with mm. with with uh, Kawhi. So the, <clears throat> We can say all this, oh, this guy rebuffed LeBron, this guy rebuffed LeBron. They were buffing you-know-who also. Mm. So with that being said, look, I understand. He has more money than all the other NBA owners combined. If they compiled all their money together, they don't have more money than Steve Ballmer. Mm. That's why he can go it alone and say, yeah, I'm going to build my own $2 billion arena. And I'm going to do all this. He can do all that, Skip. But at the end of the day, this is always Always going. You can bring another team here, Skip. You think it's going to be anything other than the Dodger town? You think this is going to be anything other than the Laker town? You're sadly mistaken. It's not. This is what it is. This is what it's going to be. And the sooner he accepts that, the better off he's going to be. He'll sleep a lot better at night. I mean, he probably sleep good worth 100 bill. But if he think he got to have a team that's going to challenge the – Skip, these Laker fans, it's Lakers or nothing. It's Dodgers or nothing. I'm not – Ain't no other favorite player. They don't got no other nothing. I, I've never seen anything like it. 
I mean, you can go other places like, well, you know, I, you know, if I wasn't this, I root for that. They, they're like, no, I'm a Laker. I don't care what else happened. I don't care nothing about anybody else. Dodgers. I don't care about no any other team or this guy or Mike Trout or that. It's Dodger. Mm -hmm. It's Lakers. Dodgers. Yep. Ain't nobody been. I I've been there five years and I, I don't go out much, but I've been a lot. I ain't seen nobody say I'm a Clipper fan. Mm. Not one person other than you. Mm. You a full Clipper fan mm. anyway, mm. so I don't count that. Not one Clipper fan. Mm. I'm a Kawhi fan. You know it, and I know it. Nobody but a Clipper down and, and, and Marcellus. And they, they where, where, where are they anyway? Mm. So I worked here for the L.A. Times a long time ago, back <laughs> in the 1970s, and this town was Dodgers, Dodgers, Dodger Blue, Dodgers. Yes. First and last. It was a Dodger <laughs> town. Yes. The Lakers had Kareem, but they didn't have magic, and they hadn't become Showtime. And once that happened, they began to rival the Dodgers. Yes. I'm not sure they ever supplanted the Dodgers, but they it rivaled the skill. Dodgers. Okay? And the Rams have always been the Rams. For some reason, they've never caught hold. Actually, when the Raiders were here, they started to threaten just because they had such a fervent following. Yes, yes. And, and it was just something about the silver and black. Yeah. It, it appealed to a whole new segment of the Excuse population. Me, it was hard to get behind the Rams because the yeah. Rams was in Anaheim. Yeah. They were theoretically well, what in L.A. I, I was covering when they were at the Coliseum, and it was some sleepy Sundays out at that Coliseum. <laughs> you got to believe me. So here comes this man with all this money yeah. and all this chutzpah. Yes. And he's got some guts because he's got some billions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so. And I love this story. This is my favorite story of the week because he is saying, we are coming, Lakers. We are coming. And he was asked by Bill Plaschke of the L.A. Times, do, do you actually think that Laker fans are scared of you guys? And he said a little bit. And then he chuckled. He said a little bit. Yeah. And I say it's a lot. <laughs> I, I just wish we had lie detectors attached to these two chairs where our faithful viewers could see it go up on the screen yeah. and watch the needle go mm -hmm. like this. Because I believe that deep down you're not a one on a scale of ten. I think you're up about a seven right now. For about what? Because you are afraid of who the Clippers are and what they might be. What are they? Well, they're no longer the cheap, crappy Clippers, you, right? Okay, Skip, you, you get you get in your own place. You're getting out of, you're getting out of our apartment. Mm -hmm. You're getting out of our basement. Well, as We're he in said, the duplex. He said, we've got to get out of the shadows. Ah, there you the go. The basement. Got there to get out go. of the shadows, and we need to build our own home court advantage in a new place right. and a new time. Right. And it's going to be state of the heart. It, it's going to be way beyond anything Staples ever dreamed of being. But it's, guess what, Skip? You got this pearly nice building. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And you got state of the art in the Jumbotron. And I'm sure the food is going to be, everybody's going to be Michelin star restaurant, Michelin star quality, all of that. Mm. But what about your product? Mm. <laughs> what about the product? See, we put a great product in the Staples Center. Mm-hmm. All I know is once they signed Kawhi Leonard out from under the Los Angeles Lakers, it was the biggest shocker I've ever experienced in my career. It was July the 5th of a couple of years ago. Yeah. And you know and I know we had a literal earthquake here in L.A. And it was it was a yeah. seismograph sizable yeah. one, right? It yeah. shook. It did. It shook all the way to Las Vegas. It shook the the, the scoreboard in Las Vegas but at we the got, summer league. But we got a title okay. already. Y'all ain't got none. And you did not see that coming because nobody reporting in the media saw Kawhi Leonard doing that to LeBron Being James. Being sneaky, huh? Because LeBron was telling all of his media confidants, we got Kawhi. And Kawhi had, had a quote to... Um, who was it to Rick Buecher, I believe, mm -hmm. that, that was previous to this move that he made when he said, I, I, I don't want to play with LeBron. I want to play against LeBron. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah. So you can so say. So he don't want to win no titles. That's what well, he said. Basically say, what he said, you, I don't want to win any more titles. I got two things. and I'm good. He had two, and, and he would have had three no, last year if he hadn't gotten hurt. Nope. Thanks to Joe Ingles. Oh, really? I thought, you, I thought you said it was an accident. <laughs> I thought you said it was just a little bug. It was just a subtle little bump. But you blame Joe Ingles now. Well, he was the one who initiated <laughs> said bump. And I told you it looked worse than I than people were thinking because you thought, oh, he'll be right back because he came back in the game. And made but that's what you tell throws. me. That was that, that, I was just going by what you tell yeah, me because okay. LeBron would came back in the game, so it couldn't have been that bad. So that was just basically on after your medical expertise.
It took Chris Paul having the game of his life to end that series in game six. Do you remember what he did late third all the way through yeah. the fourth? I've never seen anything like it. I didn't know Chris Paul had that in but him. But, Skip, it was taking Paul George. It was taking It was taking uh, uh, Marcus Morris. It was taking uh, uh, um, your guys. It was taking you guys to have the game of their lives mm-hmm. in order to continue this series. We were on a roll. We had come back from 0-2 down at Dallas and down, what were we? You go two down. Yeah, well, I can't remember how you many go, points we were down in the first quarter. Did we get down to 18? Yeah. <sighs> I've never seen well, you like down it big, before. You were down big to Utah also. We're down and it big. took Karen's man having the game of his life. He did. And he was arriving as a star. Not a superstar, but a star. And certainly a starter for this team. Mm-hmm. And if Kawhi had stayed healthy, and Balmer acknowledged this, that they're going to go win it all. That's what he, he believes it. I believe it. You said they would have at least gotten to the finals. Yeah. Well, if we did help, well, it wouldn't have been close because the Nets would have won it if we do it help. But that's a part of it. That's a part of it. That's what makes sports so because it's over a long period of time. And then you got to stay healthy and dodge those minefields. Mm. It, it, it's a minefield. Sports is a bunch of minefields. You never know when someone's going to step on one, mm-hmm. and it's a hamstring, it's a knee, it's an ankle, it's a whatever, yep. and they're out, and it upsets your entire season. Mm. And that's what happens. Mm. So the Milwaukee Bucks were able to navigate the minefield. The Nets were not. Mm-hmm. The Clippers were not. Yep. The Lakers were not. What happened on Kawhi's opening night? You want to talk about guts? You want to talk about so to speak, onions. Kawhi Leonard drops a commercial on opening night as they're playing the Lakers at Staples, and it's a New Balance commercial. And you ridiculed it, said they're orthopedic shoes, right? And I don't know if we still have that hanging. Yeah, you know. Oh, we still have it. Look, there he is in his vintage car. Wait, look at the keychain. It's Mm -hmm. it's got a crown dangling on the keychain. He's saying it is my town, Kawhi Town. It'll never be. And there's a new king in town, right? It'll never be. He announced his presence. There's Kawhi Town. This is Kawhi's job. It's to beat LeBron. It's going well. Skip. Huh. You and I they both. They won that game that You night. and I both huh. know. Interesting. It doesn't matter how good. This Ka- is his city. It doesn't matter. The Rain. Be- Skip. Over L.A. The, Rain. The best player on the Clippers won't be as popular as the third or fourth I, best player I, I on the you, Lakers. I give you all the above. But the Clippers are serious business. They really have to deal with. The Clippers could probably win five straight championships and it wouldn't turn around but, thinking you, you, in stop, L.A. Stop, stop. You know that's not going to happen. Well, you better hope they can win five straight playoff games. Mm. Forget the championships, because this is the first time you've ever been to the conference finals. Mm. Let that sink in for just a second. And now, after going to the conference finals, you're going to overtake the Lakers, who's been here since the 50s, mm. who has 17 titles, and have pantheon greats. Mm. Bomber doesn't care about winning L.A., he cares about winning championships. Yeah, he cares that's about winning all. LA. Yeah. That's why he wants. That's why he wants to get his own building. Mm. He don't want. He don't because he knows as long as you stay in that building, that's all you ever be. Because mm. here's the thing, Skip. If a if a child stays at home as an adult, all he'll ever be is a mama's boy. He's gonna have to get out on his own. You're gonna have to go out on your own, get your own building before you can be thought of as anything else other than our little brother. Mm. And even then. I still get referred to that Sterling's little brother. Mm. That's what they call me. And I'm cool with that. Mm. All you'll ever be mm. <laughs> is the Lakers little brother. Mm. Nothing more, nothing less. You know, your energy and emotion <laughs> indicates you're afraid. I never yeah. afraid. <laughs> because there's nothing subtle about what you're saying. You're not shrugging this off. You're on fire with it because you know they're coming for you. Here's the thing, Skip. I felt I needed to match a uh, bomber's energy. Mm. You know he had that energy. He up there. Yeah, I will be the head. You got to kick your legs up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. he, he yeah. out of grabbing of emotion. Yep. And guess what? I saw him walk up out of there with Chris Paul. Oh, oh, oh close out Chris. Close did that number on him. Yep. Did a number on him. An ex Clipper did that to yeah. the Clippers. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I could. Meanwhile, LeBron's across the street at the WNBA. What did that be with LeBron? LeBron I don't know. Had to do with I don't this. know. He couldn't stand it. He just wanted to distract the attention from what was about to happen because he knew the Clippers let were coming. Sink, let that sink in for a second. Yeah. A young man that plays for the Lakers mm. that's not playing in the playoffs upstage the Clippers by going to a WNBA game. And you young think the man? Clippers, you think young the Clippers man? can overtake the Lakers? What's LeBron in now? Year 23? 
and still put puss in them young boys. Is he? Put puss in them. Ask Kawhi. You remember what he did to Kawhi? Hmm. Shut it down. Made him pass the shot up. Pass it to Paul George. You shot an air ball. That's what Goat James do to folks. Oh, shit. No mercy. We all know the script for beating Tom Brady. Pressure up the middle. And thanks to Aaron Donald, the Rams are better equipped than anyone to follow that recipe. And no one knows that better than Brady, who said, quote, they're one of the top-rated defenses in the league. They have one of the greatest defensive players of all time. Everything about this week is challenging. So, Shannon, we know the Bucks are the defending champs, mm -hmm. but how much of a shot do you give the Rams to get to the Super Bowl? I gave them a nine shot. Oh, to get to the Super Bowl. I thought you said to beat them. Mm -hmm. Skip, I, I, I think it's the Bucks, the Rams. There's only a handful of teams. Um, the Bucks, the Rams. I think maybe the probably, maybe the Cardinals. I, I think you could stop with those two, but go ahead. They're prohibited yeah. favorite, but they're yeah. like they're, they're, obviously. I, I don't think the Saints are because normally we put the Saints in there with Drew Brees. Aaron Rodgers, the defense, the defense concerns me about the Packers right yep. now. So they need to work. So, so they're about three or four teams. But I think those are the two favorites. If I, if you say, well, who are your two favorites? I would say the right now the Rams and the Bucks. Mm -hmm. And because Matthew Stafford completely ch changes tra the trajectory of how high this team can go. Mm. Because he can just make throws. He can just do things that Jerry Goff can't do. You have to defend from... The line of scrimmage to 60 yards, left, right, out, up, everything. He can make every throw skip. He can change play, play the arm angle, the slots in which he can throw the ball. He can do the no looks. I've seen him throw a no look touchdown. And he already got on his resume. He done beat Tom before. Mm. One of the few games that Matt Patricia, as you call him, Coach Pencil or whatever he was, <laughs> one of the few games that he won. He did. He beat he beat Coach Belichick and, and the Patriots. In I Detroit. Think, yeah, 26-10, yep. to 10, I think. Mm -hmm. And Matthew Staff had a pretty good day. He Threw did. two touchdowns. Carry on Johnson ran for over 100 yards. Yep. So, but they, they're good team, Skip. The Good balance, offense, explosive, can throw the ball. Um, they're not dynamic. They're two best, I think, their two best backs got hurt. Um, and so they're, they're trying to get the running game up and running. Now, Sony Michelle. But they can throw it. They got guys. Mm -hmm. He can throw it, and they can catch it. Mm -hmm. Cooper Cup, oh. Robert Woods, Deshaun Jackson. They got Tutu Atwell. They, uh, uh, I like Higby. I like the tight end. They got nice pieces, solid offensive line. They do. I love Sean McVay calling the plays and that defense. When you got Aaron Donald, you don't need much else after that. But Joseph Day, uh, Leonard Floyd, Ramsey, they got, they got pieces, Skip. They got pieces that can contend for a Super Bowl. Mm. So I, if you right now, as we see, and I know it's early, Skip. We got 15 more games to go, and a lot of things can happen between now and then. But right now, I would say the Bucks and the Rams would be my two favorites mm. to represent, to uh, one of those two teams to represent the NFC. Are you, do I sense a groundswell inside you of support for the Rams? Are you starting to lean toward driving a new bandwagon? No, 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 no. <laughs> I just want to know because I'm got, smelling it, sensing I, I it, just, feeling it. I just, I just got to answer the question. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, how confident I think they have to be the two favorites. I bet, the, the, what, what does Vegas say? What does Fox Bet say? Well, who who the, who the Fox bet money on? That's where I'm going. Whatever Fox bet say, that's where my money going. <laughs> oh, really? Yep. Okay. I'm not sure where the odds are at this moment. <laughs> we can have them. Well, but probably, but I, I'm sure the Bucks are the favorite, but I'm not so sure the Rams aren't close behind. Okay. Now back to Sunday. You have me at a supreme disadvantage right now. You have me on the run. I almost certainly will be without Tom Brady's favorite target. Antonio Brown. His only legit deep threat is Antonio Brown. He nobody will be able to take the top off unless it's Scotty Miller with five seconds left in the first <laughs> Before half. The half huh? Right? That's about all I got. I will definitely be without my best all-around defensive lineman is JPP, yeah. and it's not close. I'm talking about against the run. Pass, you, you yeah, name he can it. line up all over. He over, and, and, the, he over and, the center, he over the guard, the and, tackle, and, and, he dropping in coverage. Every once in a while, he drops into coverage and does a really he nice job. He got great job. hands. Yep, For somebody does. only got, you know, missing a couple of fingers uh, on one of them. Correct. He's gone. So my chances are dwindling here. I'm up against it. And there's a chance here. And I'm definitely not backing off my prediction here, though it has been undercut. But I'm definitely not backing off on the Bucks winning the NFC. And it's, it's possible 
that they will lose this game, but the, with the supreme advantage they have, they play a way easier schedule they than do. the Rams. The Rams are in, obviously, the toughest so, division. <laughs> that's the problem. And, and if you want to make a case for the 49ers being a threat yeah. to go to the Super Bowl, God bless you, because they well might be. It's just a Jimmy G issue right. that they still face. And can they keep a, a, a running back healthy? Maybe some One running back. <laughs> Maybe you can go out on the street and find another they one. They seem to what they're doing. And again, Seattle is an enigma to me because I have the highest regard for the quarterback he fell apart down the stretch last year but they can rise up at right. any given time right. and beat anybody any way you want to do it yes. right yes. in arizona i love that little quarterback man, that little quarterback skill. he's Woo. special man he is very special <laughs> but it required them to to watch a field goal missed from 37 yards out by the Minnesota Vikings mm -hmm. kicker, or they're going to lose at home to the Vikings. Mm -hmm. And it's a shootout, and he goes for 400-plus. Mm -hmm. But, again, the point is you, the Rams are going to have to deal with those three yes. teams twice each while the Bucks get to go back. And I know Carolina's better, but okay. And we know Atlanta, they already beat them once. Right, and is in New Orleans. Yeah. Jameis, or is it going to be Taysom Hill at some point? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So here we go. This is not a must win for the Bucs, but it's a game where I predict, obviously, Brady's going to win MVP and they're going to go 20 and 0. Well, this is a game that for a while this week they were underdogs in, but it has flipped around. The betting public has made them the favorite. Right. So from here on, what, what I predicted before the year that they were going to be betting favorites in all 20 games, or well, again, that's counting the, the playoff games. Right. But let's do 17 games. Yes, they're going to be betting favorites in all 17. Right. They will be favored to win the game, and they're they're favored by a point and a half, mm -hmm. last I looked, right. to win this game, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what does this game boil down to? No AB, no JPP. I still say for me, you're betting on the wrong thoroughbred because – as much as I respect Matt Stafford, is he has enormous arm talent. It's up there with Aaron Rodgers' mm -hmm. arm talent. It's up there with Mahomes. It, the, the arm isn't as strong as Mahomes, mm -hmm. but the ability to throw off platform, yes. side <laughs> off, yes. no looks, yeah. it's right there. Yes. And I think it's been underrated right. and underpublicized because it's been lost in Detroit yes. until now. Mm -hmm. This is by far the biggest stage he will have ever played on. Mm -hmm. Matt Stafford has played in three playoff games and lost all three. Probably should have pulled the one off in Dallas in 2014, but they did, I would be the first to admit, get robbed. Yeah. Okay, But he's still 0-3 in the playoffs. His record in Detroit was 74-90, 90 losses and one tie. Since he entered the league, only one quarterback has a worst overall starting record, Phillip Rivers. Let me ask you a question. Let's just say for the sake of argument, we go back and we play that Super Bowl, and instead of Jerry Goff being the quarterback, Matthew Stafford is, is the quarterback. Mm -hmm. You feel they still lose this game? The, to Brady? Yeah, yeah they would have lost to Tom Brady because it's the one man in the Super Bowls you do not bet But you know Tom him. didn't play that particular way. Tom okay, wasn't but when it was time to drive them going five for five in that mid-fourth quarter drive mm -hmm. for the touchdown after the, what was it, 31-yard pass to Gronk that went yeah. down to the one, he did that. Yeah. And he was the MVP of the game. And no, Julian Edelman would not mean uh, Julian Edelman was the MVP. I know, but I'm saying he was, I, I fought for him to be the MVP. No, no, well, no, caught, no, no, 200 yards and no touchdowns. Well, Edelman, Edelman caught a bunch of first half balls, but when it was time, Chris Hogan was catching big passes and Gronk caught the biggest pass. Right. I thought it was Brady all day and all night. But the, but the pass that golf let hang up in the air when he had Brandon Cooks in the end zone. He did not Stafford play well. Get, Stafford would have got that up and down. When they go that bomb blitz and he throw it off his back foot yep. and he gets picked off by Stephon Gilmore, I believe Matthew Stafford makes that throw. Okay, when when did he show you in Detroit he could do that? He had Calvin Johnson, Megatron, for seven of nine years yeah. of those nine years in Detroit, and he made one Pro Bowl. Yeah. Really? It takes, sure? more, Skip, it takes more than one player. Uh, the defense. Has he ever had a defense like what he has right now? Nope, he has not. And you're saying what? Has that he ever had the pressure he has right now? Nope, he but has not. But he said he wants that. Mm. I'm going to take the man at his word. Skip, I take a man at his word until he proves to me otherwise. Okay. He says, I want to play in these type of games. I want the responsibilities of being in these pressurized situations. Well, they're here. They're here. Okay, Jared Goff. I, I still think he's a little better than Matthew No, he's a little better. Okay. A little better than what? He might be a little taller. 
2017 at Dallas, he won a shootout with my man Dak Prescott, and he was highly impressed. My guy beat game. your – Stafford done, done gone to Dallas and beat the brakes off him, mm-hmm. beat him when they came. Like you said, he threw 329 yards. How you let a man throw 329 yards to one man? Mm. Then I watched on a Monday night, an epic Monday night battle in which, would you believe that Jared Goff outdueled my homeboy and threw for 413, four touchdowns and no interceptions, and the Rams – Held on and yeah. and won fifty four to fifty one. Yeah, well, you give up the fifty, you give up fifty something points. Mm. I mean, my home, I mean, what more? Homeboys had what five touchdowns, four and seventy eight yards. Mm. Who made the biggest play of the game to beat my Cowboys in a playoff game out here at the Coliseum after the twenty eight? But that ain't saying to beating your Cowboys not saying much, Skip. You acting okay. like they you beat, they beaten, you know. Then he went to New Orleans to Jared Goff and he outplayed Drew Brees and they won in overtime. He had a QBR of sixty eight to Drew's fifty three in that game. Hmm, that's interesting. And I give you that Tom Brady slightly outplayed him in the Super Bowl, and he stunk in that game. But then last year in a playoff game at Seattle, I don't know, Jared Goff won that game. So, yeah. And then he was too banged up to play at Green Bay. Right. Okay? And, and that's one of Boy, the— that's a lot of big wins for but, Jared Goff. But if you think about it, Skip, for the most part, Matthew Stafford has been healthy. Mm. The, the injury situation. But in the big moments, we haven't seen Jared Goff. Jared Goff has been— I can't, I, I can't coach you. I can't call the perfect play every time. Mm. At some point in time, the quarterback is going to have to make a bad play, a perfect play for you. Okay. Sean McVay feels like I have to call the perfect play every time in order for this offense to function. And he says, I just can't be perfect all the time. He has a guy that when he's less than perfect, yep. can make it perfect. I believe that Matthew Stafford... I think it'll be Sunday, but it's going to be slowly but surely through the year. We'll get exposed as not that guy. Does not have big game intangibles. Got it in him. Will make big mistakes at big moments. Yep. You remember when uh, on Friday when Smokey Mama gave him a dollar and said, go get a pack of cigarettes? Mm-hmm. Yep. And she, he said, that ain't enough. Make it enough. Okay. I, I, I'm still, he can do that. I, I'm hanging with the golden god. I got 30 to 28 Brady over Stafford, and I think it'll come down to which one of those quarterbacks makes the play at the moment. 33, Brady, 32. No mercy. Come join Fox's big noon kickoff at Soldier Field in Chicago for the biggest pregame party of the weekend. There'll be live music, ticket giveaways, and so much more. Be a part of the live TV audience at the Great Lawn on the east side of Soldier Field tomorrow, 8 a.m. local time, and then tune in at 10 a.m. Eastern on Fox. First year coach Nick Sirianni stirred the pot of the Eagles Cowboys rivalry when he met with reporters yesterday wearing a shirt saying beat Dallas. Sirianni said of all the NFL rivalries, this one reminds him the most of a classic college football rivalry, adding, quote, I'll be wearing this all week. My kids got it. My wife has one. And yeah, we'll be wearing them. So Shannon, do you like, love or hate this? I like it. And like you said, this is like a college vibe type of a situation. This is like a rivalry, maybe Michigan, Ohio State. Alabama, Auburn, you know, Georgia, Florida it has that kind of feel. And I, you told me that you believe that the, uh, the Cowboys' biggest rivalry is the Washington football team. Well, Philly views their very biggest rally as the, rivalry as the Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. As being in a, in, a, in, a, in a division, the Raiders, we called it Raider Week. Yep. And it, it was there with Dan, it was there with Wade, but it got more with Mike because Mike was once employed by Al. Yep. And Al refused to pay Mike the remaining of his he salary. Did. So we took it personal. That like, hold on, you hire this man, you won't pay this man his money, so we're gonna beat hell out of you, we're gonna make you, we're gonna make you pay it. Mm. And so that's the way we approached it, Skip. So it was Raider Week. We knew mm. it was Raider Week. Mm. Not a day, not we didn't, we didn't have no teeth and anything printed up, but it was Raider Week. Mm. We was on a heightened alert. Because we know what they represented, they know what we represented. It's a one-on-one, one, one-on-one battle skip. Mm. You really, you really didn't have to hold, watch a whole lot of game film that week because they're gonna be sitting right there in front of you. It's mano y mano. They trying to come knock your head off. You trying to tear their heads off. Yeah. But uh, Nick Sirianni is trying to send a message, guys. Fans, I understand the significance, the importance of this ball game. Players, I want you to understand the significance and the importance of this ball game. Yes, it's the third game of the season. But we want to go out and get on a, a great start. It's still beating a look, beating a division, a division opponent. It's a good feeling. Mm. It is, it's a good, it's a good feeling. Mm. So I, I, I like it. He's a young coach, Skip. He, he, and a lot of times, you know, obviously veteran coaches and coaches with experience. This, he and he popped up out of nowhere, Skip. Nobody had Nick Ferry on their radar for being a head coach. I didn't even know who he was. I didn't know who he was either. Mm. But Skip, I, I like this. 
And I, hey, send me one. Mm. <laughs> send me one of them shirts. I wear it too. Really? Yep. <sighs> now to answer Alex's question. <laughs> Like, love, or hate this. I love it for my Cowboys <laughs> because it feels to me like they are now the Philadelphia High School Eagles. <laughs> this is a hairy high school move. No. I, I, I'm sorry. I, 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 well, he just turned 40. D did he just coach in high school? I think he coached in well, Indianapolis. What, what, what you going to do with Mike McCarthy have uh, uh, shirts put up like rematch against the Cardinals? Well, he, what, what you going to do? What you going to say? Well, but he doesn't do T-shirts. He said that. Tried to hype up his team to get even with those guys. In a preseason game. Yeah, in a preseason game. I, I got that. I, I cannot defend his lack of motivational skills. But I can criticize the young, new Eagles coach, right. just now 40 years of age, because it doesn't work this way. Trust me, in the Cowboy locker room, they are trying not they're to laughing. laugh over yeah, they're this. Laughing. They're laughing. Because they don't care about the Eagles the way the Eagles care about the Cowboys. Right. Nobody is saying it's Philly week in the Dallas <laughs> locker room. They do say it's Washington week. Right. They, they have said that for years and years. Right. But it is a one-sided rivalry. Right. It is a one-way street. Philly wants to beat Dallas way worse than Dallas wants to beat Philly, but Dallas will beat Philly right. on Monday night. <laughs> so the point is, it's, it's what I've told you for years. And, and by the way, my man Zeke said this yesterday. He said, well, we just stay in our lane. We don't do that kind of stuff. Right. But he did acknowledge later in that same interview to USA Today, actually, that, yeah, I, I, I hate the Eagles. Well, that's I, I told you how I grew up as a Cowboy fan. <laughs> I respected the Giants because they're a class organization. Right. What's to hate about the Giants? Right. They're just a division rival. Right. Washington, I, I I never liked them, but they I didn't. They do the movie skip the Cowboys, the Cowboys and the and the. Yeah, but but I, I, the honest truth was deep down I respected and feared Washington every mm -hmm. year because th this is a blood rivalry. Right. But when it came to the Eagles, I just hated the Eagles. Right. I, I didn't like their uniforms. I don't like that green color. I don't like anything about them. I told you the story. The Cowboys had just been born. I think I was like 10 years old. And my parents weirdly went to a preseason game the Eagles played at the University of Oklahoma. This is back in the day when you had to barnstorm to promote the NFL, right? right? Yep. And they bring me back an green Eagles, like a, a pennant, you yep. know, like a pennant yep. to yep. hang up in your yep. room. Uh -huh. And I just threw it in the trash. I, I thought it was the ugliest thing I've ever seen because that, that, that was like erpy green to me. It's just like <laughs> ugly color of green. So that, that's the feeling Dallas has right. for Philadelphia. Right. But now Philadelphia is making it a huge thing to come to Dallas, and, and they play like it really matters, right. and it matters to Dallas to win a division right. game. But they're not, right. they're not taking it that seriously. And the Eagles said, well, hold on. We could be, you know, there's a possibility we could be first in the division and put them way back down. They could be either, you know, Second to last, or even last in the division. So we're trying to get trying to get some little, some wins, some little cheap wins early. Cause you know we, that's what we're gonna do. Get a little cheap win against you guys. Mm. Uh, and so I, I look, I, I like it. I don't look. I don't like. Man, they, everybody should do this. But mm. for him, he feels that this is gonna. And he needs to skip. And look at all the players that they've lost. You talk about somebody defense that's been hurt, ravaged by injuries. Theirs have been ravaged by injuries. Brandon Graham. Yeah. Yep. So, okay. So the point is, in the end, the, I, I think the Eagles players themselves are laughing at this in the locker room like, God, what is he doing? Mm -hmm. Because who the hell is Nick Sirianni? That's what they're saying. Well, well Skip, you remember in the, in the, in, <laughs> in the 80s and in, 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 in the uh, late 90s, Buddy got the Eagles and the Cowboys because he put bounties out on them. So it was it was it was it was uh, Buddy Ryan that really got this thing. The Eagles and the Cowboys going to a different level, Skip. Because remember, he knocked they knocked Troy out of the game. They did, but they were <laughs> loaded on that they defense. Were loaded. It, it, it was Buddy Ryan recreating the '85 Bears yes. in Philadelphia. They had Reggie White, Clyde Simmons, Jerome Brown. They had Byron God Evans. They had Seth, Seth Jordan. Yep. They had Muddy Waters, Eric Allen. <laughs> they had a. They, uh, uh, they had a squad. They had a squad, and they had Randall Cunningham at yep. quarterback, and he was a magician. He 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 could do things yes. that were Lamar esque. Yes. He he was just a, he was a taller, longer yes. athlete, but but he could. Whew. Yes, yeah, we end up we play, as a matter of fact, we played him in '92 in that off season. Uh, Jerome Brown, rest his soul, Skip had got had died in a car accident, and we played him, and they had you know we were going to dedicate that season.
I think they might. I think we might have had 100 yards of total offense against them. Mm. We played them in Philly. Mm. We, I mean, John couldn't. I mean, as soon as he dropped back the pass, either Reggie or Clyde Simmons was on him. Okay, but then '92 they came to Dallas for a playoff game. Yeah. And things changed, <laughs> and they changed for good. They, cha- they changed for Elvin. They did. That was the that end was of the that. Last, that was Reggie's last year because he was. ended up going to Green Bay in he '93. Did. Thank but you. I think. I think, like you said, Skip. I think Philly view Washington, a uh, Philly view Dallas, a lot different than Dallas view Philly. That is a fact. Thank you, <laughs> Nick Sirianni, whoever you are. No mercy. Christian McCaffrey left last night's game against the Texans with a strained hamstring. Carolina had no problem beating Houston, and now they'll have more than a week off before facing the Cowboys in Week 4. McCaffrey was an All-Pro in 2019, but missed all 13 games last season with a variety of injuries. So, Shannon, will injuries always be a problem for him? I don't think so, Skip. I just think he's had a run of bad luck. Uh, the first three seasons, um, he didn't miss a game. No, nope, and didn't. um I, I, uh, last year against Kansas City, Skip, he's trying to get extra yards for a stretch over the goal line, I think it was, and he sprains his AC joint. Yep. Um, the, then a few weeks later, guy falls on his ankle, he and has a high, high ankle sprain. sprain. Yep. Last night, he's trying to, you know, stutter step a guy, and he, he tweaks his hamstring. But, Skip, I, I mean, when you look at it, he had 30 touches in week one, 29 in week two. Skip, that's on a pace to over 500. You never – and you have to understand – He's only, he's slightly over 200 pounds. He's not Derrick Henry. I agree. Derrick Henry is 240, 255. So he can take that kind of pounding, but I don't think Derrick Henry can take 30 touches every game. Now we got 17 games, Skip, put you over 500 touches. Yeah. I just think they might need to, to pair some of those carries, you know, pair some of those touches. Mm-hmm. They do have Chuba Hubbard. They have Chuba. I don't know. I would have kept Mike Davis and let Mike Davis take some of that, some of that burn off him. Um, but I don't think I don't think Skip. I don't think he, he just had a, a very bad uh, run of bad luck, a streak of bad luck as, de- as far as dealing with injuries. Um, but hopefully it doesn't something that that sets him down. You guys catching a break again? You always catch breaks because you know what was going to happen. It had C Mac been in there, he's going to run all over you guys, and Sam Darnold's going to throw a party on you guys. Mm. But doesn't seem like that's gonna happen. You dodge the bullet again, but Skip, don't make a lot. I, I don't think I don't think uh, 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 he's injury prone. I just think he's had a bad streak, a bad luck. I wish he could play a week from Sunday. No, at you Jerry don't. World because he would get Micahed, as in Micah Parsoned. Mm-mm. Yep, nope. be all over him. Look, I'll be the first to admit. Christian McCaffrey has been much better than I thought he would be in professional football. Mm -hmm. You basically watched him grow up in your locker room, right? (laughs) Yep. Uh, When did you first see him? Age 80-ish or so? No, he was younger than that. that? Uh, Ed got there in 96. His father. Ed got there in 95. Ed McCaffrey, yeah. So he probably would know, Skip. He He wasn't even born then. He wasn't born until about 96, 97, so since he was a baby. Okay, so but you saw him very young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had him on at the Super Bowl in Miami, and I was highly impressed with him. Oh, he put together. He is put together, and he's he's also put together mentally, where he's in charge of Mm -hmm. it. He gets it, sees it, knows it. He he knows all the right rules, yeah. the nutrition, yes, the, yes, the yes, yes, massage therapist. Yes. He's he's got it all. And guess what, Skip? He saw his dad. He, I mean, he his, I mean, right there. How his dad ate? His dad always getting massages, always getting stretched, always got worked on. Dad played. I think I think he had played thirteen years. I think he played one year fewer than I, what I played. Mm. So he saw. And, those and th- what was his dad to you? What, describe him to, to those who don't. Uh, know. quite, quite, kind of like Christian. Ed was quiet to tall. himself. Tall. Yeah, Ed was about six five, probably around two fifteen ish. But I believe in a foot race, his dad could outrun him. His dad was probably faster in a forty than what C Mac is, mm. if you can believe that. Um, long strider, he, much taller. Christian is probably what five eleven. Dad was six five, um, but they were, their personality is very similar. Um, Ed was tall. Ed Locker was right across from mine, so he was tall. Obviously, he did a lot of laughing because I kept a lot of people in stitches. But he was just you know go about do his job. That, that's how he was. Tough guy. T- yeah, yeah. Some of the shots that Eddie took, I was like ooh. I, I heard, you, you okay, bro? Mm. You know, he'd double up, come off the field for a play. Next thing you know, Ed run right back in the ball game. Yeah. Durable. He, du- very, very durable. Now, Skip, I know, I, I think you remember that, uh, I think it was 
the night before 9-11. He suffered that gruesome leg injury on Monday Night Football against the Giants. So he missed the rest of that season. But he came back the following season, and, and you know, he played really well because I, I, I came back, and that was, he was coming back off that gruesome injury. But he played well. I've always said it is a huge advantage for a kid to grow up in a professional locker room. Yeah. See Barry Bonds, Ken Griffin yeah. Jr., mm -hmm. we can go on yeah. and on. See Shannon Sharp at least being around right. his big brother. You look Sterling. at Dante Winfield, look at Winfield Jr. Okay. Look at McCann. Antoine, yeah, yep. yeah, Antoine, mm -hmm. excuse me. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Look at the Mannings. Look at it. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, it just gives you a jump start. Howie it, Long's kids. Howie Long's kids. It, it makes you feel so much more confident yes. because your dad did it and you grew up around it. Well, it, it's yes. just what I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I can do this. Yep. I think Christian had that belief in yeah. himself from the start. Yes. I watched him a lot at Stanford and he amazed me. Because he will run it between the tackles. Yes, that's a, that's a pro style offense. Yeah. Yes, they and, run it, but yes. And they hammered him. Oh, they hammered away, mm -hmm. and he stayed a little nick. Yeah. He always had something going on. He did end up missing one game against Notre Dame that last year with a hip injury, but then he comes into pro football and he astounded me with his durability right. for three years. But they are. They are just wearing him out. Yeah, yeah that's, that's too many to carry for somebody he, so small. But he can yeah. catch it as yeah. well as he can carry yeah. it. So he became the whole show. He became a fantasy football super duper star, <laughs> yeah. right? A yeah. Hall of Famer, yeah. right? And then last year, as you said, it started to happen. This, this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. High ankle sprain. Then bum, banged up right. shoulder. And then he had a, thigh, a deep thigh bruise right. that he couldn't get past. Right. Well, is he is he going Zeke on us right before your very eyes? Because because Zeke just he just like quote unquote died for the cause. He gave you three great years, right. and he's high collision. Mm -hmm. He is a warrior. I think right. this this kid's a right. warrior too. Skip, skip, even though you're like, oh well, you're not just handing it to him. He, you know, he does get tackled on when he catches the ball. You know, they just don't tackle people that run the ball, Skip. If you catch it, they will tackle you also. So when you give him those many touches, Skip, that's getting, he's getting hit. So how many, just think about if he, he gets hit, he breaks a tackle. So instead of having one hit, he might get two, three, four. Because he's a, he can break a lot of tackles, Skip. And so for me, I just, I hope, and I think it's just a, a run of bad luck. But I do think they're going to have to curtail some of his touches, Skip. 5'11", barely over 200 pounds. That's a lot of, that's a lot of touches for someone so small. He, he's also put together to where he's a little tight yeah. to me. Yeah. So it didn't shock me that the ham went right. last night right. because he's just running. And all of a sudden, he kind of goes up. Right. And he's like in midair. Yeah. And it, oh, yeah. and then I got to shut it down. Right. I don't know if it's just tweaked or who knows the extent of it. We can right. see it right there. You can just see him go up, and oh. that's the end of that. Yeah. But Skip, Skip he can't do TB12. Yeah. Running backs can't do band work. They got to have iron work. <laughs> so it's a, whole, it's a whole different ball yeah. game. I, for his sake, because he's such a good kid, I, I hope he can fight through this. But yes. I don't – I'm going to predict he won't have a long career. He, he It's just it, – it, it's just too dangerous what he's doing. He's going to get banged up right. and stay banged up. Right. But he, he has become their whole show. Right. And, and if he could get back quickly and they could stay on course and have one of those shocking breakthrough mm -hmm. years, which they are on course to do because of their defense, right. he's going to get in the MVP conversation. Right. If he could come back quickly from right. this, if it's only a tweak, yeah. if he could get back in and, 10 and, days. And, yeah, but that's the thing, though, Skip. I mean, like you said, I mean, 5'11", a little barrel air with 200 pounds, that's a lot. I mean, like Barry. Barry was put, put together like oh. that. But you weren't getting no, no shots on Barry. No, I mean, no. you push Barry, Barry getting pushed out of bounds. Well, Emmett was 5'9", right. barely, barely over 200. 200 but, but you, you ain't getting no clean shot on shot. Emmett. I've never seen such quickness and, in a confined and, and, space. And we're not going to confuse Carolina's offensive line with what Emmett no. was running behind. <laughs> what no. Emmett was running behind. I think he's the greatest ever. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's going to be hard-pressed to say that it wasn't. Now, Skip, they weren't. It would have been great to see. Had big easy, the right tackle, stayed healthy. Yeah. That car accident Eric robbed Williams, Eric yeah. Williams. It, that car accident robbed him of his but he was he was a man. He he was a, a grown man Ooh. and Nate and Tua Nate and Stepnowski and they had Golgan. Yep. They they had, they were loaded. Mm. Skip, you remember I was telling you about we played uh we played uh the Eagles in ninety two. They looked up our stats from that game, they beat us thirty to nothing. We had eighty two total yards and four first downs. Whew. 
That was when Buddy was flying. <laughs> that is yeah. good. So, uh, we, we didn't have a good day that day. Uh, no. no mercy. Fox Start Saturday Strong with a big noon kickoff pregame show at 10 a.m. Eastern, live from Soldier Field in Chicago. Then at noon Eastern, the 12th Wayne Fighting Irish take on number 18 Wisconsin. Big noon Saturday begins tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on Fox and the Fox Sports app. LeBron will enter his 19th season trimmer than usual, according to Rob Blinka, who said, quote, he slimmed up going into this stage of his career. He's made a decision to come back a little bit leaner, and I think that's going to translate in his explosiveness and quickness. He's been very, very locked in with his training, and you pay the sense he has a confidence in his teammates when he looks around the locker room. Shannon, do you believe LeBron will be in even better shape than he was last year? Even better than last year? Skip, I don't like, I don't like to get into quantifying when it comes to shape. Because the one thing that we know about LeBron James is that he's never out of shape. Mm. But I am a firm believer as we start to age in a professional sport, we should drop a few pounds. I know that's what I did. I didn't weigh the same in my 30s as I did in my 20s. And as I got closer and closer, I started coming in a pound, two pounds lighter. So by my last year, I would come, I showed up to camp at about 226. And my last game, I weighed 223. So that's the way I like to do it, whereas I'll be coming in at 237, then 35, then 36, then 32, then 30. So I just felt as I aged, I needed to get lighter, Skip, because normally as you get older and you weigh the same or you weigh more, you're not as fast. So I felt as I was getting older, I needed to take some weight off so I can maintain that level of quickness. So I can share this with you. Somebody's in a heap of trouble. Mm. <laughs> See, AD felt that I needed to be able to bang. So I'm going to play a lot of five. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need to bang. So mm. I need to beef up. Mm. LBJ says, you know what? I'm about to be 37. I'm going to be taking off from half court. I need to trim down. Mm. Long story short. Short story long. Mm. <laughs> Y'all over. It's over. It's over now. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You get treated so yeah. bad. Yeah, You keep picking the nets to win it all. Don't you worry about that. I tell you who I'm not picking, Clippers. I did. It's over for the Clippers. It's over for the Clippers. Yeah, it, it won't be over if he comes back by March. As well, I, I, don't know who he, I don't know who he is, well, he but is, if he comes he back, he. he in trouble too. He is he. He <laughs> is the... Whoever he is, he in trouble when he, he comes back. Kawhi Town owns this town because he <laughs> owns the Lakers. No, he doesn't. Stop saying that. Okay, so one day I hear that AD has buffed up, yeah. and Coach Vogel says he's imposing. Physical. Imposing. Yes. The next day, the GM says that LeBron has slimmed up. Sleek. It's usually slimmed down, but I'll give you slimmed up. I know where he's going yeah. with it. Sleek. And he says LeBron has been very, very locked in with his training. Well, this indicates to me that he was a little overweight last year. And wait, all those videos he posted oh, over the last three years, I guess they were just a bunch of phony baloney do that, that he yeah. must have been eating a little baloney no. along the trail. You saw the man. Because he, he's saying he's more locked in now with his training than, than he used to be. So I guess all that, woo, woo, look at me, all those videos that I had to sit through and sleep through. You didn't have to sit through it. Why you followed it? I, I, it's my job. I don't <laughs> You're follow it. Do. I see them at night when they get sent on our, our undisputed <laughs> night list. I'm like, not again. LeBron, are you the only one who works out in the NBA? Yeah, right? yeah I love that, bro. Get hype. Get hype. The hype videos. And, and I'm saying, wait a second. Are, are you suggesting that you work harder than anybody else? See, Kawhi works really hard. Kevin Durant works really what hard. Kawhi they just on? don't post. I, I'm not skipped. Mm. First of all, Kevin Durant can't gain weight. Mm. Kevin Durant's going to be 172 pounds at seven foot tall for the rest of his life. Yeah, Kawhi is put together. Kawhi put he is all man. man is all man. Yeah. Nick, Mr. Glass. Yeah. That's what he is. Okay. You remember the character? You know the character I'm talking Mr. about. Glass. Yeah, Samuel L. Jackson character. Okay, so are, are we suggesting here that LeBron was, dare I say, fat last year? No, what we're saying is that he realized that he needs, he, he gets a full off season. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of guys that didn't come back in the peak condition uh. because it was a, a quick turnaround. Ah. LeBron needed ample time. Now, he's like, you know what? I tried to be maybe five pounds heavier. Mm. That, that doesn't work for me. Are we I, suggesting maybe he celebrated a little too long okay. after the bubble championship? Bubblicious. No. Asterisk. I don't believe. Cubic zirconia. The one thing I don't worry about LeBron. Mm. 
is I don't worry about him not putting the work in. Oh, because really? you don't get to this level without putting the work in. Huh. He put the work in. Well, now, I kept telling you last year, it looks like he's got some new love handles. He had no love handles. Yeah. I mean, the guy had love handles, and before he got injured, he was favored to win the MVP. Mm. Now the man get hurt. You see what you did? Now he got hurt, and you want to forget all about it. But up until that point, he was the front runner for the MVP. Mm. How, how can LeBron be more locked into his training than he was last year, year before, year before? Be because, Skip. More locked Skip. in than ever? Yeah, because guess what? You're closer to the end huh. than the beginning. Oh. And that's what you start to do. Because so what we start to do, Skip, as we start to age, we realize the one thing that we can never mm. recapture is time. Mm. We can't borrow it. Mm. We can't hold on to it. Mm. All we can do is that so, embrace it. Wait, is that a picture of the fat LeBron? There, there you go. See, there you go. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because it looks, that's what the suggestion here is. And by the way, Palinka says that, that he, he now, you, you get a sense he has confidence in his teammates when he looks around the locker room. <laughs> what locker room? They haven't been in the locker room. How can you be looking around the he locker room in the offseason? He knows what's in that locker room. He knows what's in that locker room. He ain't got to worry, he gotta he worry about, played with he don't worry about somebody coming. He don't worry about somebody coming to work with pink hair, green hair, red hair, yep. yellow hair, mm. baggy pants, a cowboy boots, a, a, a construction outfit on, mm. overalls, dungarees, britches. Mm. He ain't got to worry about that. Mm. He worry about guys that play foot, play basketball. Has he played with Ellington, his new starting two guard? Yeah, don't Has worry he about it. played with Malik Monk? Ooh. Gonna be ditching that oh, bag up. Has he three, played with Kendrick Nunn? Cola. No, I don't think so. Lockdown D. Huh? Has he played with Trevor Ariza? I don't think so. Whoa, whoa, what well, about? I, I don't know. How can he look around and have confidence? And by the way, Dave McMenamin reports that he's just maintaining his weight at around 250 pounds, which it was listed at last season. I, I'm getting mixed messages. You ain't getting no mixed messages. No mercy. Well, Anthony dropped his all time NBA starting lineup on a recent podcast, which included himself at small forward, teamed with Magic Johnson, Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett, and Hakeem Olajuwon. It's worth noting that Melo and the podcast host agreed not to include Michael Jordan since he's a lock, but social media was shocked that Melo named himself as a starter over his closest friend and new teammate, LeBron James. So, Shannon, will LeBron be upset with Melo uh. about being snubbed <laughs> in the all-time starting five? Well, Skip, I, I think... Uh... LeBron answered this because they asked her, you, you, uh, you and LeBron going to be cool? And LeBron <laughs> said, I, I guess so, uh, <laughs> in, in, in a tweet. Skip, I mean, come on, man. What is this? I mean, he got himself, Magic, Kobe, and Garnett. Garnett? And, and he got, on the bench, he got LeBron, CP3, Durant, Wade, and Shaq. In the last two spots with the AI Dr. J. <laughs> I mean, how am I supposed to take this? I don't list? know. How am I supposed to take this list seriously? I know, that's true. I would agree. But I would say LeBron at least has to be a little miffed at it because <laughs> it, it's, it's such a shot because they, they agree that Jordan's so good, he's like on another planet. Right. Like, we, we don't even need to deal with him. Right. Well, that's wrong. You, you know, he belongs in your top five, right? Right, right. But you're going to dismiss him from even being in this conversation in a good way, but you're going to dismiss LeBron James from the top five in a bad way? But he, but he going to put himself in. Wait, wait a minute, you're going to put yourself in with a straight face? <laughs> hey, a, as big a LeBron critic as I am, would I ever argue mellow over Le No! no, no skip. Not, not in my, my wildest nightmares would I ever go that skip, far. Look, I ain't looking. I, I like to think I'm a pretty good tight end, but I ain't trying to put myself in over Gronk. Mm. I'm good with that. I mean, okay, look at but, but you're a lot closer to Gronk than Melo is to LeBron. Yeah, like, but the way, I, but you, I'm you're saying, like light years closer. Yeah, yeah but I'm just Carmelo saying. Carmelo Anthony would have the audacity to put himself on first team? <laughs> and, and then, how about the second team? He's got Chris Paul. I, I respect Chris Paul, but is he better than Steph and the biggest pitcher? No, no he's just not. not no. Does he won MVP? No, he's no. not won MVPs. No. No. And, it, you know, it's it's like Shaq. I can argue this all day long. You know, how how do you put Kevin Garnett above Shaq? I mean, seriously. Well, first of all, how do you put Kevin Garnett over Tim Duncan? Over Tim Duncan, just, who's not even, he didn't <laughs> make even the whole that. squad. He's not even on the squad. Man, Kim, Tim Duncan's the top 10 player. Okay. Again, top 20. Okay, top who 10. was your favorite player when you were growing up? Larry Bird. Larry Bird. He didn't even make the whole squad, right? Skip. Carmelo is not better than Bird. <laughs> he's just not. <laughs> he's not better than Larry Bird. No. That, that's, like, laughable right. to me. But, but how could Carmelo, as a new Los Angeles Laker, and for the first time in his life, he, his dream came true, and he is the teammate of one of his best friends, LeBron James. Right. And then he does that to him?
We are, Mr. Brown said, we go, we are, I guess we are. Right. Well, is it I guess? We, we are. Right. Wouldn't you go so far as he's a little miffed? Uh, no, you know what? I, I think the thing is, Skip, is that when you're friends with someone, you can joke with them in ways that other people can't. Now, I'm not so sure if somebody else makes this list uh, that he's going to be, and they put Melo, they put Melo in over, over him. I'm not so sure. He might, do, like, really? Even though, even though he's like, oh, hold on, that is Melo, that's my boy. But I know that's my boy, but he ain't over me. If somebody else did that. But I think he, knowing, he, he knows Melo, he cool with Melo. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Okay, but in, in the end, I, I don't think it'll be a long-term part. I think LeBron is just... He probably, short term miffed about he it. Probably call, he, he probably called. He probably called. He probably called LeBron. You think so? Yeah, he well, but but from what I read of this, I didn't actually hear it and see it. Right. But but the point is, it it came off as he was serious about it. Skip. After he, he had, wasn't joking. Skip. He had beef with Kevin Garnett, and he gonna put Kevin Garnett that's, on that's his first. That's another good point. Because <laughs> they, they didn't just have beef. Yeah. They had yeah. some yeah. some serious that's issues so, uh, going you know, on. Skip. It's like it's like. It's like a situation like me, you know how me a good uh, Deion saying time is. Mm-hmm. I'm a cop say, man, they would give me to say, well, give me your two best corners. I'm a cop say, bro, I left you off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But in all honesty, but you ain't no way you leave can, him off. I, I would. Well, you, you, that's you, it you for us, can. guys. We'll be back Monday at 9:30 you know Eastern. They don't Enjoy go the James weekend the in the fall, but don't go anywhere because the herd no, starts.